will be attacking that away end. It's the usual goal service. We'll go here, there and everywhere. Our figures were heading towards around 2 million listeners last season. So that thing won't have changed as everybody now takes the knee in the message that there is no room for racism as part of the Premier League. You'll see that replicated up and down at every Premier League ground on this opening weekend. And it was warmly applauded by the supporters here at the Amex as we are underway and Luton Town, whose last game in the top flight was Notts County, May 1992. They hadn't won at all away from home in that campaign, but after 31 long years, they are back rubbing shoulders with England's finest in the top tier. And uh, Brighton and Hove Albion, as you say, they don't come much tougher after what Roberto De Zerbi has done. He's taken Brighton to another level from uh, Graham Potter, who worked wonders himself whilst he was here. Um, Brighton, of course, did well last season. Arsenal, well, they were top for 248 days in the Premier League last season. And they are underway. And in fact, they've just finished in that early kickoff. Nottingham Forest, full time, John Southall. And they've started with a win, Ian, but only just Arsenal 2, Nottingham Forest 1, 2 up at half time through Ketia and Saka. A one year pulled one back eight minutes from time. Forest gave it a right go in the second half, but not enough. Arsenal 2, Forest 1. And earlier in the Championship, Coventry City beat Middlesbrough by three goals to nil. Brian and Hove Albion with March. Taking over now is uh, is Milner, and he wins uh, he wins a corner. Milner is playing on this near side. He is he? playing on the right back, yes. But as much as he's going to be disciplined and diligent in his defensive duties, you will see him being fluid in his movement, linking up there with Solly March, and gets an early corner for the Brighton team. Which Gross is going to take? March actually is also there if, if the short option is is required. So Brighton playing from left to right in front of the away support. And they're waiting to take this corner kick. The right arm goes aloft from uh, from Pascal Gross. March not required. It's an outswinger. Dunk rises, comes off his head in the penalty area. Matoma tries to keep it alive. Rebounds almost towards Welbeck. Now over on that far side is Dahoud, who turns and delivers the cross and dunk with a header. Just couldn't keep it down. But no wonder De Zerbi is applauding above his, uh, his head. Yeah, they have started brightly, haven't they, Brighton? And especially Matoma on that left-hand side, jinking his way to get half a yard. Manages to stab a ball to the back post and dunk unmarked there. Probably just a little bit too high for him to get his head to knock it back down towards goal. Over the bar it went. This is the opening day of the Premier League season. On the last day of last year's campaign, it was a rather nervous affair at Goodison. We'll go there now, Lee Blakeman. Everton nil, Fulham nil, but Neil Mopé could have scored inside 30 seconds. Played in behind, right side of the area, tried the shot hard and low, a whisker wide of the bottom corner. Everton nil, Fulham nil. Chong looking for a little touch, runs into trouble, tries to hold on to the ball, then runs into the referee, David Coote. Uh, Thought maybe he might have actually given uh, an uncontested drop ball for the way he got involved there, but he's let the game flow as, uh, as David Coote, who, would you believe, was in charge of Luton Town 14 years ago when they took on Kettering Town at Rockingham Road. 14 years ago. And if you think, you know, from non-league to Premier League, nine years, the first club to return to the top flight after leaving the Football League, already I've heard Wrexham saying, we hope to do a Luton Town. You know, they have, um, in many years ago, they'd say, could they do a Wimbledon when Wimbledon came into the Football League in, what, 77, was it? Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, people say, well, let's try and do a Luton. Well, it's a great story, isn't it? And very similar to one of Brighton, nearly going out of extinction. And it's, and it's what it's about, the fans, isn't it? The community all coming together. And for them to do it so quickly, can they sustain their Premier League status next season. Well, here is Morris picking up the ball and charging at the Brighton defence. He runs left-hand side of the penalty area and cuts it back, and Jason Steele gathers it in low, making that save inside his six-yard area. Now he throws the ball out to Estepinian over on that far side. There's a real intensity to these opening four minutes. And as you can see, Rob Edwards definitely saying to his Luton team, get on the front foot, let's be diligent when we defend, but when we get a chance to attack, let's go at pace, as they just showed there in that last one. Giles looking to try and touch the ball in field to Adebayo. They lose the ball. March now picks it up. And uh, a measured pass out towards Estepinian on that far side. 
as De Pignan runs forward. He makes good ground too. Diagonal ball taken into the path by João Pedro into the penalty area. It might fall back towards Gross. Back towards Pedro, scuffs it. My word, Luton Town had only just sort of like dealt with the initial attack, but it was kept alive by it by Gross. And a cleaner strike by João Pedro, who sprang back to his feet so quickly. You're thinking Brighton have got the goal. It should be 1 0 Brighton there. You're thinking the chance had gone on the first one. It was a great ball from Estupanan. Pedro just tried to get it in touch, but it was a great tackle from Lockyer. But he rises to his feet before any Luton defender. And it's a put on a plate from him from Pascal Gross, and literally on the six yard box. He won't get a better chance in that all season, I'm sure. All he has to do is just side foot it into the goal and scuffs it and drags it past the far post. It's the voice of Steve Sidwell, the former Reading, Chelsea, an Aston Villa player who finished his career at Brighton. And just thinking about it, Paul Trollope, who's on the bench with Rob Edwards, he would have been here with you under Chris Hewton, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, Troll's great coach. Uh, I think it was with probably Rob when he was doing his coaching badges. I think Rob, Rob Edwards done his uh, through the Welsh FA where I done mine actually, along with Mikel Arteta, Patrick Vieira, a long list. Um, and as you can see with this football club, he's gone on from strength to strength. Brighton, as we've seen with this posh seat next to us I Stella. know yeah the tunnel club I think it costs you something like £9,000 for the season a short so, change for you <laughs> you're joking I work for the BBC <laughs> here is uh, here is Chong coming forward now outside the uh, the centre circle check by Esther Pignan and that'll be a free kick and Esther Pignan is going to get shown a yellow card from the uh, the referee David Cook so the first booking six minutes in a little bit harsh, I think, that one on Mr. Pinion. So you can see him locking the ball wide and trying to run around him. And he keeps his arms in, he doesn't move out in the, the way of Chong, but obviously David Coote feels as though he's impeded him on purpose. Got to say, if you haven't had a chance to, uh, to listen to it yet, uh, Howard Webb, head of the PJ MOL, in conversation with Mark Chapman, you can get it on the Five Live Football Daily feed on the podcast, about half an hour long, but it does give you a great insight as to how the referees are going to try and change things this season, the initiatives, their approach that Howard Webb is trying to instigate as that ball goes forward and then it's sent over across over the head of Anderson and towards that penalty area and Brighton get the ball away. We'll go into the uh, to the championship goal, Southampton, Paul Scott. Not the start they wanted at a sold out St Mary's, it's Southampton nil, Norwich one, across from the right, headed in by Josh Sargent at the far post. Seven minutes gone, Saints nil, Norwich won. Both won last week on the opening day of the, uh, or the opening weekend of the uh, the Football League season because of course Southampton have played at Sheffield Wednesday on the uh, on the Friday night but they are ahead there are no other goals to tell you about it's the uh, the usual goal service on a Saturday new season on five live same old service more live Premier League games than anyone else and to follow this after sports report we'll be at St James's Park for Newcastle United against Aston Villa Aston Villa who've recruited so wisely as Welbeck shoots from distance and it just goes wide he teed himself up it was a, a good 30 yards out and he hit it right footed and screwed it just off target goal kick eight minutes played we're going to go to Goodison Lee Blakeman Everton nil Fulham nil but Everton have had another great chance to Corey down the centre went through one on one great save by Leno with his trailing right foot Everton nil Fulham nil Lee have taken an early lead, two points to nil against Hull KR in the Challenge Cup final. Commentary of that is on Sports Extra, the iPlayer, as well as the BBC Sport website. It is live, in fact, on BBC One. And earlier, St. Helens beat Leeds Rhinos 22-8 in the first ever Women's Challenge Cup final at Wembley. BBC Radio 5 Live, eight and a half minutes played. 5 Live, the World Service and BBC Sounds here. Good effort from Welbeck, wasn't it? It was a great effort from Welbeck, yeah. I don't think his first touch meant for it just to pop up, but it did. And it just sat there beautifully to hit with the laces. You hit the, get enough power on it, gives it a little bit of dip, and it, it's like it just sort of skimmed the back net behind the, uh, the Luton goal there. Burton nil, Derby County 1 is the latest score in League 1. No others to tell you about just as yet. This is uh, Van Hecker at the back. Blonde-haired Dutch defender. Lewis Dunk now takes over. Lewis Dunk signed a new three-year deal in uh, in July. Now Pedro. Gross tried to lay it off first time towards Welbeck. There was uh, Ruddock to uh, to break it up. Pelly Ruddock for Luton Town. And now making good ground over on that far side is uh, is Cavore. He has done very well and delivers a, a low cross from the uh, from the right. Nobody could get on the end of it. Adebayo and uh, Morris were there. 
Well, that's going to be the game plan, isn't it? Stifle Brighton as much as they can. And when they win the ball back on transition, can they attack with pace? The ball there fizzed across the six yard box. Morris just couldn't get enough dynamic athletes in there to get on the end of it. Cross comes in, and in the end, it was Dunk who did ever so well under pressure from uh, Adebayo to uh, to see it back towards Steele. That's why the Brighton fans are, uh, are reporting. But that strong run by Kabore, excellent recruitment, Luton Town. They have had for a, a number of years. Uh, Mick Harford, of course, at the heart of it. A season-long loan from Manchester City. He's from Burkina Faso. He's a, he's a right back, but last year played for Marseille. Champions League experience. So they're getting a, a youngster who's uh, still got a lot of... Uh, pedigree if you like uh, four appearances in the uh, in the Champions League and uh, it was a strong surging run nil nil it remains at the Amex 10 minutes play Sheffield United Crystal Palace Tom Gale where it's also nil nil Ian but we've had the first attempt of the game for the Blades their 20 year old Danish striker Will Osulu dinking on the right hand side of the penalty here onto his left Kirli Nepper inches wide Sheffield United nil Crystal Palace nil now Barnsley last week was 7 nil winners against Port Vale it was the biggest opening day win by a football league side since 1962 and they're already leading again uh, at Bristol Rovers by a goal to nil in League One Newport lead Doncaster 1-0 in League Two and in the Scottish Premiership it's St Mirren 1 Dundee 0 free kick to Brighton meanwhile 11 minutes play BBC Radio 5 live and Brighton and Hove Albion midway through the Luton Town half good 15 yards or so in from that uh, left touch line and it's going to be a touch to Gross, who then plays the ball back to Estepinian, looking towards Matoma. Haven't really mentioned much of Matoma so far. No, he had that one little flirt, didn't he, at the, uh, on the far post, where he managed to just wriggle half a yard and, and, and dink a ball to the far post for Dunk. But, you know, he's been such a highlight, hasn't he? He's been a, a great signing for this, uh, for this football club at Brighton, especially home at the Amex. He's got some great goals on the travels as well. He'll be a player that they certainly look to in the European um, travels this season. Yeah, they will. September the 1st is the draw for the Europa League group stages. It's a, a date I'm sure there's already been penciled in by many a Brighton fan as they look forward to their first travels as a supporter following their club as the, the first time in their history they're in European competition. We'll nip to Bournemouth, Jonathan Overend. It's Bournemouth nil, West Ham nil, but already a great example of what the new Bournemouth manager is trying to implement here with his high-pressing style. Solanke has dispossessed Aguirre on the edge of the box and it's led to Brooks shooting left-footed narrowly wide. Bournemouth nil, West Ham nil. Goal at Rangers, Conor McLaughlin. Rangers 1, Livingston nil. It's Sam Lammers who opened the scoring for the home side. Great link-up play with Todd Cantwell. The initial shot was saved. He tried again and pulled the trigger from just inside the box. Perfect start for Rangers. Rangers 1, Livingston nil. It remains nil-nil here. Arsenal beat Nottingham Forest earlier by two goals to one. But in the three o'clock kickoffs at Bournemouth, Everton, Sheffield United in this one, yet to have a goal so far. As uh, Dunk and Van Hecker pass the ball to each other patiently at the back the only two Brighton players actually in the Brighton half is now at Matoma collects it and his first touch is to try and take it past uh, Kabore on that far side he's held up by the other uh, Luton Town defender now a cross comes in Gross tries to get on the end of it Welbeck's there as well Lockyer tries to get it down and away and Luton scramble the ball clear and then Milner, no foul from uh, Morris the referee actually has played the advantage good uh, refereeing from David Cute letting the game flow we just see him behind the Zerbi here and I mean his step count within what we've got 13 minutes into the game is just ridiculous yeah. you know I thought like, I'm sweating for him he's uh, he's animated as ever I talked before about that podcast with Mark Chapman and, and, and Howard Webb and and how there's going to be a, a robust approach if uh, if you like and how managers are going to have to contain their emotions um, particularly De Zerbi, four yellows and two reds last season so uh, every manager, well, in fact, everybody's been communicated uh, really from the, from the new approach, but uh, De Zerbi will have to uh, heed those lessons, otherwise he'll face himself in hot water. Well, that is more than a lot of players have played the game, uh, for sure. But you can see from Brighton, you know, he, he's asking them to be patient and, you know, don't force the play. You know, there's a lot of bodies behind the ball, especially when you've got Van Heck and Lewis Duncan literally on the halfway line. You know, they're trying to cut the lines and, and get in behind, but it has to be at the right time with the right accuracy and right pace. Jao Pedro picks it up. Now he's being booed because of his Watford connections. 
from the uh, the Luton Town supporters behind that goal. So many of them wearing the uh, the replica orange jerseys. As uh, here is Milner midway through the Luton Town half. He's got uh, March out to this right touch line. March now collects it, comes on the inside. Gross is also there as well. Milner has, uh, has stayed forward. And now Gross just trotting in field. Little touch by De Hood. German international sweeps it across towards Dunk, who joins the attack. Now it's Estepinian who clips it in, and it's gathered out by the, uh, the goalkeeper, Thomas Kaminski, signed by from Blackburn Rovers in the, uh, in the summer. Um, for Luton Town as the ball then goes all the way back to uh, to Jason Steele. 15 minutes played. I think Rob Edwards would have taken that, wouldn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they look very comfortable out of possession, you know, in their structure, in their zones. Where that's going to go from the back three, turning to the back four. The midfielders, I'm really impressed with Chong at the moment. He's getting around, snapping at the heels of the, the Brighton midfield, winning the ball, trying to play on the front foot and then get in the box. So there's plenty of energy within this Luton team. Can they do it and sustain it for 90 minutes? Certain United are down to 10 men as they are drawing nil-nil away at Barrow in, uh, in League Two. Still goalless here at the Amex on BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. De Hood back towards Dunk. Little flick forward. Gross then gives it back towards Dunk and Luton Town. Still quite a high line, so it's very congested in that middle area of the half away towards our right, as now Dunk tries to open it up out towards March, but that was headed away well by Ryan Giles, another debutante signed from Wolverhampton Wanderers. He was uh, on loan at Middlesbrough last season, as Milner plays the ball inside. March now on the edge of the area, he's tackled, it'll be a free kick. Before the free kick, we'll go to Bournemouth, Jonathan Overend. Still nil nil, but West Ham have hit the post. Neat interchange between Ben Rama and Socek. Socek's left foot shot hit the upright. It rebounded, it almost fell to Antonio, but luckily for Bournemouth, back into the arms of Neto. Nil nil. Cheltenham nil, Bolton one, Bradford City nil, Colchester United one is the latest score in League Two, and you're up to date on BBC Radio 5 Live. We're in the 17th minute, and at the minute, uh, you've got four Brighton players in conversation. The who pick up, picked up the ball first, then Solly March snatched it from him, then Lewis Dunn come over, and now it's left to Pascal Gross and Solly Marsh. Well, Gross will probably be fancying it, it's certainly within range. It's about 25 yards out from goal. It is right of centre. Brighton are playing from left to right as we look. Newport County have got a second goal at home to Doncaster Rovers. 2-0 in League Two. It's Gross. A few steps back. One then to the left. March still eyeing it up. But it's Gross who touches it towards March. On his left foot, into the wall, into the penalty area. Lockyer struggles to get it away. Only as far as Estepinian. Plays it towards Matoma. Looks to try and check in onto his right foot in the penalty area. Back to Estepinian. Fires it in. And Cannon's behind for a Brighton corner and Luton are under pressure. Luton under pressure, but two good blocks there from their midfielders and defenders. Putting their bodies on the line. That's what it's all going to be about today. But can Brighton just find that half a yard? Can they find that quick spark to unlock it? Another corner for them, though. Corner kick over on the far side, the left. Once again, it's uh, two Brighton players who've got over. Dunk is forward from the back. Van Hecker is there as well. It's the Luton supporters behind that goal that are making the noise at the moment. As March once more walks away, Gross to take it. Arm goes aloft from, uh, from Gross in towards the near post. Headed away, though, by uh, Adebayo for Luton Town. Dahoud. Heads it back to the edge of the area. Comes back towards March on the left-hand side. Gross is there as well. He swings over the cross. And it was dropping rather awkwardly, but goes out of play for a goal kick. Another goal at Southampton, Paul Scott. 18 minutes on the clock. It is Southampton 1, Norwich 1. The equaliser for the home side coming from defender Jan Bednarak. Lashing in from six yards after Angus Gunn parried a header into his path. Southampton 1, Norwich 1. Hull KR are now leading Lee in the Challenge Cup 6-2. Commentary continues on Sports Extra, the iPlayer, BBC Sounds. It's live on BBC One. Still no goals in the Premier League and the three o'clock kickoffs. But Luton Town coming forward. They win the ball in midfield from Ruddock. Releases Adebayo. Adebayo now looking towards Morris. Controls it. Looks to try get it off his right foot onto his left. Block though a sight of goal. Kabore is right corner of the area. He delivers the cross too deep and out of play for a goal kick, and it remains nil-nil. Goal in our featured game in League Two. Shojo Saka last week. I think you were at Wrexham. 
You're at one of the other new boys this weekend, Meadow Lane. Yeah, not uh, going well for the promoted side either here. Notts County nil, Grimsby won. Mistake in the county midfield. Solo run by Grimsby striker Danny Rose. He slotted home comfortably. His first goal since his summer move. Notts County nil, Grimsby Town won. Certainly didn't go well last week, did it? They got absolutely pummeled 5-1 at Sutton last week. Interesting that Luton Town keep attacking on this, this near side. The left is well back. Coming forward now, he was almost caught by Lockyer, gets the shot away, still right-footed, and it was a, a, a comfortable save by Kaminsky. When you say about Luton attacking down this left-hand side, that's what Brighton have done there, haven't they? You see the, a gaping hole, well back on the end of it, didn't get his head up and could, couldn't see Pedro that was unmarked in the box, and Mat Matoma on the far post, decided to go alone, get a strike on goal, but yeah, you can definitely see from Luton when they attack, it's an area where they're looking for Milner when he Brighton have possession and he steps inside that mid midfield area to try and overcrowd that midfield zone that they are open to, uh, to quick attacks. Here is Dehu, that's the voice of Steve Sidwell. You think as well, Steve, is that last season, Luton Town, 15 of their 21 wins were achieved with having under 50% in terms of possession. So. They will be well versed. I know the quality is, is a step up in terms of, you know, you're now playing in the Premier League. You're up against one of the most attacking sides in the top flight in Brighton. But they'll be well used to not having the ball. That's been their game plan, that's been their model, and they'll do that more though, more so than ever this season. They're, they're used to it, they'll be disciplined, and they'll say, right, you try and beat us, and if you don't, then we're going to get on the attack as quick as we can, and we have to be clinical. And uh, Giles hits it first time. There's been another goal at Southampton, Paul Scott. What a quick turnaround, Southampton have just scored from the spot. It's Adam Armstrong making no mistake after Jan Bednarak leveled. Saints now 2-1 up. BBC Radio 5 Live and the World Service, 21 minutes played. Bournemouth West Ham, goalless. Everton Fulham, 0-0. Likewise, Sheffield United, Crystal Palace. And still no goals here between Brighton and Hove Albion and Luton Town earlier. Arsenal. Beat Nottingham Forest by two goals to one. Coventry City three. Middlesbrough nil in the championship. And in the Women's World Cup quarterfinals, it'll be Australia against England on Wednesday morning in the semis. After Australia, in a very tense penalty shootout in sudden death, knocked out France and England came from behind. Sorry, England beat Colombia by two goals to one. So Sweden, Spain on Tuesday is the first semi. England, Colombia on Wednesday morning is the second semi. Both games will be live on BBC Radio 5 Live. Here we are at the South Coast, from Sydney to the South Coast, as uh, March back to, uh, to Van Hecker. Gross, De Zerbi. I think it's the first time he's stood still, isn't it? It is, and a few of his players are standing still at the moment. They just need to keep that game mode of just passing the ball. Every pass changes the picture. Even if it's a five-yard pass, it'll always change the picture on their football pitch. They can't get bored with just keeping the ball moving and trying to move this Luton team. It's a, a humid afternoon as uh, Luton Town are attacking once more on that far side. Kabori with the cross and trying to get on the end of it was making a run through the midfield was uh, was Pelly Ruddock just threw himself at it didn't he he did I think the referee has blown possibly for a foul on Milner where there was a slight pull on the shoulder but again that Kabori down that right hand side looking for quality in the box which he has produced on a few times and it was just Pelly wasn't he just leaning I think on on James Milner at the end but full of energy threw himself into it all for the cause West Bromwich Albion are leading Swansea City by a goal to nil at the Hawthorns in the Championship. We'll go back to Bramall Lane, Tom Gale. Sheffield United nil, Palace nil, but the visitors have had a goal disallowed here. And Joachim Anderson let fly from 30 yards. Fodringham flapped at it, palmed it straight to Ayew, headed it home. Correct call for offside. Sheffield United nil, Palace nil. Roy Hodgson celebrated his 76th birthday on, uh, on Wednesday. He's uh, still going strong. Matoma couldn't get on the end of that forward ball over on that left-hand side. And uh, it will be cleared away by uh, Luton Town on that far side through uh, through Krabari. I'll tell you what, all the goals, they're just a little bit further down the south coast. Paul Scott. A quite remarkable first 24 minutes here at Southampton 2, Norwich 2. When you were last with me, Adam Armstrong converted the penalty to put Saints 2-1 up. But a wonderful goal from Gabriel Sara, a left-footed shot from the edge of the area, across the face of goal, rifling into the top corner, means it's Southampton 2, Norwich 2. 
Swindon are leading crew by a goal to nil at the county ground in League Two. You might recall their game at Colchester United last weekend was uh, was postponed. Uh, Rangers have got a second goal at home to Livingston. We'll bring you news of that in a moment with Connie. Wrexham, who of course were involved in a, uh, an eventful match for their first season back in the Football League. Uh, MK Dons, they were beaten 5-3 at the race course last week, but they are leading Phil Parkinson's side at Wimbledon. Wimbledon nil, Wrexham 1, and Rotherham lead Blackburn by a goal to nil in the Championship. And I'm actually hearing, Connie, that that goal didn't stand at it, Ibrox. It didn't. I was just about to tell you it was Rangers 2, Livingston nil. Um, Jose Sifuento with his uh, first goal. However, it's just been checked by the referee. VAR says no goal for a handball, so it's still Rangers 1, Livingston nil. Thank you, Connie. And it's uh, still nil nil here. No goals, Bournemouth of Everton, Sheffield United in any of the other three o'clock kickoffs in the uh, in the Premier League. Estepina on the far side, level the penalty area. Matom, João Pedro, still being booed by the Luton supporters because of that Watford connection. £30 million, pounds, the club record buy for the 21-year-old uh, Brazilian um, as uh, De Zerbi, just standing on all in black as now it's with uh, Matoma. Matoma inside, the Hood had to stretch for it to control the ball right-footed and then it was a, a wayward finish from distance. We'll go back into the championship, another goal at Portman Road, Charlie Slater. Listen to the noise of Portman Road, it should tell you that Ipswich have scored. Luke Wolfenden with the header from a free kick, nothing the keeper could do about it. Ipswich lead against Stoke, 1-0. Know many people who do really fancy Ipswich Town, despite only coming back into the Championship from League One last season. You think that they finished last season unbeaten in 17 games. They won at Sunderland last weekend, and they're leading against Stoke, who themselves were handsome winners at home to uh, to Rotherham United on that opening weekend. Newport have got a third. Newport three. Doncaster Rovers nil. And you are up to date with the goals as they go in on BBC Radio Five Live. 26 minutes played. Goalless. What have you made of it, Steve Sidwell? Well, Brighton have huffed and puffed, haven't they? They've tried to get in and amongst this very disciplined Luton back line and midfield three that are just sitting there keeping it tight keeping it compact Matoma with the cross easily headed away by uh, Amari Bell he was uh, he was well set Walsall one Stockport nil is uh, a latest score Wigan nil Northampton Town one is uh, a latest in League One too there will be moments though for Luton when they get that quality can they find Adebayo or or Morris that will be 1v1 against Van Heck or Dunk. Well, there was Dunk trying to get to uh, to Carlton Morris first, but he flicked the ball away out towards uh, Adebayo, who holds on to it and plays the ball back. Our featured game in League One is at Leighton Orient. Sheridan Robbins. Leighton Orient nil, Portsmouth won. Marlon Pack from a corner. He didn't know too much about it. It trickled over the line. And on 24 minutes, it's Leighton Orient nil. Portsmouth won. Leighton Orient back in League One after eight seasons. They were a very entertaining side under Richie Wellens in League Two last year. Good defending again by uh, by Kabore, who was uh, quickly back goal side to curb any threat from Matoma. His athleticism is remarkable, isn't he? He's up and down the pitch, seeks uh, you know seeks and smells danger when when needed. March pops up in a central area, feeds it out towards Matoma. Matoma unmarked, checks onto his right foot, back heels the ball towards Pedro, down by the byline. He sends over a cross that was blocked. It's going to rebound to Matoma. Left corner of the area. Matoma now has a go at goal. Punched away rather than caught by the keeper Kaminsky for Luton Town. Still nil-nil, but Brighton's pressure is building. Milner to March, edge of the area. Couldn't control it. They win the ball back. Gross back towards Milner once again. Milner sends over a cross. That was headed away by Anderson. Brought to the club from Barnsley. And now Chong, £4 million acquisition from Birmingham City. Sets Luton Town away. And now it's with... Kelly Ruddock running forward, Ruddock enters the penalty area, looks for the shooting opportunity, closed down well by Van Hecker behind for a corner. And again, just down this left-hand side, but as what we said, James Milner was up on the edge of the box, trying to get a ball in with his right foot, Luton cleared the ball, where do they attack? Down Brighton's right-hand side, their left, so it's definitely a, a motion that they've worked on uh, throughout training this week. Yeah, and uh, almost brought them a little bit of joy, but it's uh, as we approach the half-hour, it's a, a corner kick and Giles on this near side Ryan Giles is going to take it the left wing back Luton Town in their bright orange shirts it's an outswinger Morris heads the ball up Chong is also there but March will try and release Matoma but he hit it so far ahead of Matoma it actually went all the way through to Amari Bell back in the Luton Town half 
Preston North End are leading Sunderland by uh, a goal to nil at uh, Deepdale in the Championship as we go back to Everton and Lee Blakeman. Everton nil, Fulham nil, couple of chances for Iwobi, one shot from the edge of the area went straight wide, the other one took a deflection on its way through, Fulham after half an hour yet to seriously threaten, Everton nil, Fulham nil. The thing is about Brighton, they failed to score in only one of their last 28 Premier League games, they've scored in each of their last 16 and you would expect, I'd, I'd be, well, as, sure. the prof, as the professional, but I was going to say, <laughs> I'd be surprised if Brighton didn't score today. No, no, and that just you know, that's testament, you know, that we're 29 minutes in and it's nil-nil, what Luton have done. Here is Matoma, out to Pedro. Pedro enters the penalty area, the keeper has spilt it, but he manages to push it away a fraction, and then he's helped out by Bell, who clears it, but he, in fact the flag was up on this near side and it wouldn't have counted it will be a free kick to Luton Town so where will we go next on it's back to Bramall Lane and Tom Gale Sheffield United nil Palace nil Ian but the home side should be in front corner in front of the cop free header for captain John Egan but he couldn't keep it down Sheffield United nil Palace nil Gillingham have taken the lead at Priestfield Gillingham won Accrington nil that's the latest score in League Two you talked earlier about the adversity of Brighton and Hove Albion I mean you know, this in many ways, they're the perfect opponents for Luton Town on their return to the top flight. When you think that Brighton faced near oblivion in the late 90s and indeed yeah. had to play a number of their home games at, at Priestfield for That's a time. That's correct, yeah. I mean, it's been, a, it's, it's been a fairy tale story for Brighton, hasn't it? And they've gone from strength to strength every season, especially more so in the Premier League. And now they've got these riches of the European football that they can hopefully enjoy, but they're finding it tough today. Yeah. They were turbulent times following the sale of the uh, the Goldstone ground. Turn of the century, certainly a turn of fortunes and that steady rise to under Tony Bloom. And now Brighton and Hove Albion looking to try and uh, match what they achieved last season, their highest ever finish in English football as Luton Town, edge of the area, Chong, he's at Ruddock, scoops the ball in. Kabore is always willing to get forward on that right-hand side, hooks it back in play, but it had in fact gone out of play and it will be... Uh, be a goal kick but last season club records most wins for Brighton 18 most goals 72 most points 62 well, they was the most feared team in the Premier League for me you know even Man City when they was coming to here although they had unreal quality nobody wanted to play against Brighton I spoke to a lot of players that played against Brighton last season and they said it was as though they had 15 16 players on the pitch which just goes to show how well that they was playing and, and dismantling in teams wasn't they yeah they were as uh, they're looking to try and break the deadlock here at the Amex on this overcast afternoon but it's it's warm it is uh, as I say humid on the south coast Hull KR 6 it's also close at Wembley Hull KR 6 Lee 8 is the latest score in the Challenge Cup final commentary continues on Sports Extra here is March right hand side level the area back to James Milner what a servant he has uh, has been James Milner and uh, you think as well that he's actually equaling Ryan Giggs's record of playing in his 22nd different Premier League season as the ball is scooped in by uh, by Esther Pena. But um, I mean, brilliant debut in 2002 for uh, for Leeds United, and he is still going strong at the ripe old age of 37. Matoma, edge of the area, tees himself up. Right-footed effort, volley off target, goal kick, nil-nil. Oh, what a great ball there from Pascal Groves because Welbeck and Pedro made darting runs into the box and he has whipped the ball purposely to miss them out to Matoma on the right-hand side. Again, a, a first touch that probably popped up that he didn't mean to, but again, he took advantage of that. See your mates making the noise there just the way go. towards our left. Yeah, there's uh, it's some... I think I found my suit for Ascot next year. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, he's certainly snazzily dressed. He's got a blue and white hat with a seagull on the top. His, his, his suit is blue and white, but extremely outlandish. And then how would you describe the shirt? Uh, I would say Hawaiian green that matches the shoes. Has he got matching shoes? Looks as though. I'll tell you what. <laughs> he now knows we're talking about him. Cheltenham nil, Bolton 2. I tell you what, I'd, I'd pay good money to see you in uh, at Royal Ascot <laughs> dressed like that. <laughs> I don't think I'll get within half a mile of being dressed like that. Luton Town are attacking. Chong's made a run out on the right hand side. 11 minutes to go to half time. Chong sends over the cross as well. Van Hecker gets it away. Fired back in by Nakamba. 
He's never scored in English football. That would have been a fine effort. It was blocked though by the Brighton defence. As we've got just over 10 minutes to go in this first half and it remains nil-nil. Sunderland have equalised at Preston. Jack Clark's got that equaliser for Tony Mowbray's side. Cambridge leading at Fleetwood. Fleetwood nil, Cambridge won. And you're up to date with the goals as they go in on BBC Radio 5 Live. But still no goals in the uh, in the Premier League. Good bit of possession here, isn't it, for Luton? You can certainly feel they've got a bit of confidence in this game there. Controlling the game, putting Brighton on the back foot. They get on the second balls. Brighton really need to regain a bit of composure. Looking strong down that side. Kabori once again is forward. He delivers the cross. Awkward for Milner. Uh, Milner, incidentally, with his 620th appearance in the Premier League. As we say about he's equaling Ryan Giggs' record of 22 seasons in the, uh, in the Premier League. Giggs and Gareth Barry are the only two players ahead of James Milner when it comes to the all-time appearances in the, uh, in the Premier League. Here is uh, Dahoud. Edge of the area, dark head, German international to Matoma, finds March, and March with a header, twisting his body to break the deadlock, and 10 minutes before half time, we said Brighton always find a way, they have been patient, and Solly March delivers the first goal for Brighton and Hove Albion 1-0. Well, there was a lot of bodies in the box there, but it fell to Solly March, and the funny thing was, if you could see a, a replay of this, the ball was just hesitantly put into the box and De Zerbi went absolutely nuts. He thought the chance had gone. He turned his back away. But Matoma fight, managed to get the ball in there and it was Solly March that somehow sort of, he was ahead of the ball and then the side head of it. He actually did well because he's, he did have to twist the top of his body, didn't he? He's just over the... Oh, the defender's head of Bell, it was a delightful ball, it's on the button and you're thinking that Solly March has just gone a bit too early with his run but he's had to sort of, in a, in a, well, in the, what, a split second, had to halt his run and then just arc his back and neck and get the ball on target. And just when you felt that Luton were maybe growing in, in, in confidence at keeping Brighton at bay, then Brighton and Hove Albion get that first goal leading by a goal to nil Luton Town though have responded straight to the other end and have won themselves a corner kick on this near side that Giles is ready to take but it's the Brighton fans now who are making the noise inside the uh, the Amex Giles out swinger header comes back in almost an opportunity for Morris really did throw himself at that I'm not too sure who got the block what a chance this is I think it was a great header from Morris just a save straight at Steele I think if it goes anywhere left or right it's fortunate that it goes straight towards Steele with power as well by the way Morris tries to get on the end of it cleared away another corner kick on the left hand side Giles once again repeat Mike Fulton a camber on the edge of the area and then just leaning back it was a little bit off target from the Kabore and it goes out for a goal kick so Brighton lead by a goal to nil we'll go to Goodison Lee Blakeman Everton nil Fulham nil Everton have had a goal disallowed Keane put it in after Leno dropped a high ball but Tarkovsky was penalized for a foul on the keeper in the build-up that just seconds after Mope had a good chance saved Everton nil Fulham nil Cardiff City nil Queen's Park Rangers won they've only won three of their 14 games under Gareth Ainsworth but they are leading there in South Wales certainly United despite being down to 10 men are leading at Barrow in League 2 Barrow nil, Sutton United 1 as it's Cheltenham nil, Bolton 3 and Brighton it quickly on the attack and here is Welbeck off the post and into the grateful arms of Kaminsky we'll go to Jonathan Overend at Bournemouth Still Bournemouth nil, West Ham nil. West Ham gone close again though. Pakata header from Bowen's corner was off the line by Philip. Change of name for the tall Bournemouth midfielder this season, but he was in the right place at the right time. Bournemouth nil, West Ham nil. That is how you've got to be alert always with Brighton. It was such a swift counter attack, straight up to Escapina. Cross comes in first time on the left, and on the stretch, Welbeck hits the post. It was their best passage of play there from Brighton. Real good. Link, a link up play still with the ball into Matoma set back by Pedro set a Stupan off all one touch and then it was a, a, a good quality ball into Welbeck but before he scuffed the chance and then it's just kissed the post and then lucky Richet back into Kaminsky's arms yep uh, he made 118 appearances in three years at uh, Ewood Park 
Hull City nil, Sheffield Wednesday one is a latest scoreline in the championship. Both were beaten in the uh, their first games last weekend. Six minutes to go to half time. Still no goals. Bournemouth, West Ham, Everton, Fulham, Sheffield United, Crystal Palace. We've got commentary to come after Sports Report. Newcastle United, Aston Villa. That's at 5:30 with John Murray and uh, and Pat Nevin. And two more commentaries tomorrow as well on BBC Radio 5 Live. 5 Live's Premier League Sunday from midday. Brentford Spurs at 2, to be followed by Chelsea Liverpool at Stamford Bridge. But uh, five minutes to go to half time as the Brighton fans sing, We're all going on a European tour. They're leading by a goal to nil. Matoma makes the run in behind. He's got Granby uh, the back of the Kabore towards Welbeck, couldn't sort his feet out. And marvellous Nakamba with the, uh, the interception gets it away for, uh, for Luton Town. They're just starting to get a little bit of joy now, aren't they, down that far side? They are, and again, good link-up play, that left-hand side. Poor touch from Danny Welbeck, which is not like him. I think if it had been a bit more controlled, it would definitely have set him up for a shot, but the Zerbi there going absolutely crazy again. He is hopping with frustration. He momentarily sat onto the, uh, the technical area. We're very, very close to the... Uh, to the dugouts here at the uh, at the Amex, we're sitting left of the new tunnel club at the Amex. As here is uh, Gross to March. March tries to slide it into the path of Welbeck, squeezed out by the Luton defence. They win the ball back through to Hood, pressing quite high up. Free kick, and he's muttering and chuntering to himself once more. I feel he can sense this game at the moment. He's just opened up. He's just stretching a little bit. And Brighton, if they can take advantage, they can. Get another goal. Carlton Morris sends over the cross, patted down by Steele in the Brighton goal. Another goal at Meadow Lane in League Two, Shojo Saka. Notts County 1, Grimsby 1, John Bostock chesting it down in the box and a belting left-footed volley right into the net. Notts County 1, Grimsby 1. Latest in the Challenge Cup in the Rugby League, it's now Hull KR6, Lee 10. Commentary continues on Sports Extra, the iPlayer, BBC Sport website and BBC Sounds. We'll go back to Bournemouth, Jonathan Overend. Still 0-0, one of the interesting early season selections is Ariola starting the season in goal for West Ham ahead of Fabianski. Smart save from him a moment ago, down to his left to deny Brooks. Bournemouth 0, West Ham 0. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, that wasn't very well effectively defended. And uh, Matoma to Welbeck, shot blocked by Bell. Comes out to Dehoud, shoots, blocked by Lockyer this time. Still in around the penalty area, Anderson heads it away, Milner rises, beaten in the air by Ruddock. Milner though gets it back once more. They are just showing signs of creaking now, that Luton Town defence, because of this pressure throughout from Brighton and Hove Albion. Ross County leads St Johnston by a goal to nil in the Scottish Premiership as the cross swept in too deep from the left, but kept actually in play well by the goal scorer, Solly March. March now running, running against Giles. Giles gets a foot into the challenge, and it will be a corner kick to Brighton. Really good pressure from Brighton, regaining, you know, regaining possession, whether it's a long cross or knockdowns, get on the second balls. They can really sense a time frame where they can really extend their lead here. And if they could do that just before half time, it would really be a sucker punch to Luton. Yes, it would. There'll be uh, Rob Edwards with his hands on his hips, watching on in the uh, in the technical area. The Luton Town manager, corner kick is taken short, march to, to Gross, who trundles his way in now, and now turns away from Chong, delivers a right-footed cross from the right, headed out by Anderson, only as far as De Hood. De Hood plays it to Matoma, left corner of the area. Matoma at a walking pace and accelerates, but uh, Ruddock back there with the defending, and marshals the ball safely out for a, uh, a goal kick, and somebody must have spoken out of turn there because it's been a, a yellow card. Toma, I think a bit of frustration there, booted the ball into the away fans behind the goal. I'm showing a yellow card there from David Coote. So he was uh, shown a yellow card. Howard Webb has been saying in that podcast with uh, you can hear on the Five Live Football Daily, this isn't going to be, this isn't going to peter out this approach. It's not going to all of a sudden, first two, three weeks, he says it's here to stay. And uh, the players will quickly have to adapt, learn, as uh, Matoma's shown a yellow card. Giles with the uh, cross blocked down by, uh, by Milner. And the 90 seconds remaining of this first half here of Brighton and Hove Albion 1, Luton Town 0. And then a little pushover, that Gross takes a tumble, and that will be a free kick. Salford 0, Crawley 1 is the latest score in, uh, in League 2. 
and we're going to have one minute of added on time as the free kick taken quickly Steele releases it De Hood just outside his area being put under pressure by Nakamba the deep lying playmaker signed from Borussia Dortmund out towards Matoma Matoma inside his, his own half now hit forward by De Hood March making a very good run out towards that left hand side of the penalty area he sends over the cross caught by uh, by Kaminsky underarm throw out to uh, to Giles yeah, it was the first time that De Hood was linking up the play like Casado does and did so well for Brighton especially last season where they, they sort of take risks they take gamble you know on the edge of their box we see him pick up the ball Casado on his own penalty spot before with someone marking him behind and somehow skip away and then drag his team up the pitch and we just see that from De Hood. so a lot of a lot of eyes a lot of speculation is going to be on De Hood in this first few games that he plays Let's nip back to Goodison Park. Lee Blakeman. So many chances for Everton. It's still nil-nil. Mopay's just been denied from point-blank range. Just seconds after Onana hit one straight at Leno from the edge of the area. Patterson's just put one over as well. Somehow still Everton nil, Fulham nil. Bushy-haired figure of Chong delivers the ball out towards the Giles, the left wing back. Sends over a cross and Morris actually climbs very, very high. Carlton Morris and just couldn't guide that header. It was the wrong side at the right-hand post. Out for a goal kick. Brighton still lead 1-0. It was, but he had to generate so much power onto that ball. Giles has been really impressive down this left-hand side. Real good quality, not just on his set pieces, but from open play as well. And you can see there, when he got the ball there, Morris just ran into the box. He's just sort of floated the ball in, which meant that Morris had to create all the power and energy onto that header, which was very hard to beat still from that, from that distance. Producer George is suggesting that half-time you're going to nip to the Tunnel Club and do a coffee run. I am a man of the people, I can do that. <laughs> is that because I've got the access code? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there is the time to do that because the half-time whistle has sounded after the additional 60 seconds. It's Brian and Hove Albion 1, Luton Town 0, the goal coming nine minutes before half-time. Matoma's cross from the left and Solly March with a header. And here are the thoughts of Steve Sidwell. Well, I thought Luton were outstanding that first half, very disciplined, diligent. You can see they're very happy and comfortable to sit behind the ball and wait to attack on transition. Brighton had to be wary, wear down this Luton side and eventually got a chance and Sonny March punished and they go in 1-0 leaders. And indeed it could have been worse had Welbeck's effort not hit the post three minutes after they did score. So 72 goals last season and they've got the first of this new campaign as Brighton and Hove Albion lead the Premier League debutants Luton Town a goal to nil at half time. Straight into the championship where there's been a fifth goal of the first half at St Mary's. Paul Scott. We are in first half stoppage time. It is Southampton 2, Norwich 3. Norwich retaking the lead through a Jonathan Rowe header. It was a corner from the right-hand side from Gabriel Sara. Rowe was unmarked from 12 yards across the face of goal, past the despairing dive of Gavin Bazzuno. It is Southampton 2, Norwich 3. That's Solly March goal for Brighton. The only goal we've had in the Premier League so far in the three o'clock kickoffs. It's half time at the Vital. Jonathan Overend. Yes, West Ham have come the closest here. Bournemouth nil, West Ham nil at the break. Thomas Socek hitting the post and somehow the rebound avoiding the following up Mikel Antonio and straight into the grateful arms of Neto. Pakita and Bowen have also gone close, but the home side certainly have been in it. Plenty of possession, getting used to the high-pressing style of their new manager. Christie straight at Ariola and a smart stop from the French keeper late on to deny David Brooks. Half-time though, goalless. There's just been a goal in our feature game in League One between Leighton Orient and Portsmouth. Sheridan Robbins. Leighton Orient nil, Portsmouth two. Colby Bishop with a great finish into the top corner. They've had to do some defending Portsmouth in this first half, but approaching half time, Leighton Orient nil, Portsmouth two. Back into the Premier League, half time in Sheffield United's latest return to the top flight. They're at home to Crystal Palace. Tom Gale. Nil nil, Steve. You can question their Premier League pedigree, but plenty of fight from the home side, snapping into tackles and working hard to win the ball back. They should should be ahead but captain John Egan headed over from six yards out Palace's best moments saw a shot from range flapped at and saved but Ayu's heady goal follow-up was disallowed for offside half-time Sheffield United nil Palace nil and nothing doing either at Goodison Lee Blakeman Everton
Everton nil, Fulham nil, Steve, but blimey, it has been all Everton. Mope at the start of the half inside 30 seconds had a shot go just wide of the bottom corner. He had one save from point blank range inside the six yards area by Leno at the end of the half. Michael Keane had a goal disallowed following a foul by Tarkovsky on Leno in the build up. They've created so much. Iwobi has been just brilliant wide on the left. Fulham have created nothing at all on a day where they have Mitrovic starting on the bench. Everton nil, Fulham nil. Reminder, Arsenal beat Nottingham Forest 2-1 in the early kickoff. It's Newcastle Aston Villa live in full here on 5 Live at half past five into the Championship. Half time at Vicarage Road. Flo Pollock. Watford nil, Plymouth nil. Watford attacking well in Ramluza, hitting the post with a long range effort. But the Hornets look suspect defensively. There's clearly an instruction to play out from the back, but they're struggling to execute that style of play on a few occasions. Watford goalkeeper Backman has got lucky with giving the ball away. At the break, it's Watford nil, Plymouth nil though. Great start for Ipswich on their home return to the Championship. Charlie Slater. It is Ipswich 1, Stoke 0. Local boy Luke Wolfenden with the goal after 24 minutes. A header from six yards from Sam Morsey's free kick. George Hurst almost made it two right at the end of the half, but flicked the post instead. Ipswich, well worth their lead and well worth the wait for that return of Championship football at Portman Road. Ipswich 1, Stoke 0. Half time at St Andrews. Birmingham versus Leeds. John Bennett. Yes, Birmingham City 0, Leeds United 0. End to end, but very few clear cut chances in an even game for Leeds. Leeds, Ethan Ampadu shot over when he had time and space for Birmingham. Kevin Long headed just wide. An emotional scene, Steve, just before kickoff as the club paid tribute to Trevor Francis. Birmingham nil, Leeds nil. Thank you, John. Um, reminder, it finished Coventry City 3, Middlesbrough nil in the early kickoff in the Championship. Uh, other scores for you then in the Championship. Half-time, Birmingham nil, Leeds nil. We've just been telling you. Cardiff nil, QPR 1. Hull nil, Sheffield Wednesday one, uh, Millwall nil, Bristol City nil, Preston one, Sunderland one, Rotherham United one, Blackburn Rovers nil, West Bromwich Albion one, Swansea nil. Still playing in the first half at St Mary's. Paul Scott. Yeah, it's still Southampton two, Norwich uh, three. We're into the 51st minute of this first half. It was a quite remarkable opening 25 minutes. Norwich uh, taking the lead through Josh Sargent. Saints going ahead through Jan Bednarak and an Adam Armstrong penalty. Gabriel Sara levelled with a wonderful shot from the edge of the area. And then on the stroke of half time, Jonathan Rose header put Norwich uh, three two up. We're still playing here at St Mary's. So that is the uh, championship half times wrapped up in League One. Uh, Leighton Orient nil, Portsmouth two. Still playing, Sheridan Robbins? They still are playing. Won't be long before the half time whistle, but it has been all Portsmouth in terms of chances created. Orient forgetting their shooting boots. It's Leighton Orient nil, Portsmouth two. Uh, Bolton Wanderers haven't had that problem. Dion Charles has scored two, and in total they've got three at Cheltenham in the first half. So Cheltenham nil, Bolton three. Bristol Rovers nil, Barnsley one. Uh, Burton versus Derby just channels memories of the Clough family, doesn't it? Burton nil, Derby one is the halftime score there. Exeter nil, Blackpool nil, Lincoln nil, Wickham nil. No goals between Oxford United and Carlisle so far. Uh, Peterborough United lead Charlton by a goal to nil. It's Port Vale nil, Reading nil, Stevenage nil, Shrewsbury nil. Uh, and the halftime whistle has just gone. It's Wigan nil, Northampton won. Sam Hoskins, 22 goals last season. And that is his first of the new season. Uh, let's go into League Two. Sutton down to 10 men, but leading at Barrow by a goal goal to nil at the break. Uh, it's Bradford City 1, Colchester United 1, Gillingham lead Accrington by a goal to nil. No goals at Harrogate as they are currently nil nil with Forest Green Rovers. Mansfield 1, Morecambe nil. Uh, MK Dons following their relegation and leading Tranmere by a goal to nil. Newport have three in the first half. Newport 3, Doncaster Rovers nil. It's Salford nil, Crawley 1, Swindon 1, Crew nil. Uh, Walsall lead Stockport County by a goal to nil. Promoted Wrexham uh, lost on the open day but they're 1-0 up at Wimbledon at half time Elliot Lee son of the former Newcastle midfielder Rob with the goal there their fellow promoted team Notts County uh, are facing Grimsby in our feature game in League 2 Shojo Saka it is Notts County 1 Grimsby 1 uh, we have had stoppage time in stoppage time there's Danny Rose who puts it no it's not it's uh, it is Harry Clifton who's just put Grimsby Town ahead with seconds to go till half time so it's Notts County 1 Grimsby Town 2 just a few moments ago we had Jake Eastwood make two saves in the Grimsby goal but it is Harry Clifton who has put Grimsby Town ahead it is uh, Notts County 1 Grimsby Town 2 
Into Scotland, Rangers versus Livingston at Ibrox. Connie McLaughlin. At half time, it's Rangers 1, Livingston 0. A first Rangers goal for Sam Lammers and a big slice of relief for the Dutchman following Wednesday's miss against Servet. I think that's fair to say. Todd Cantwell was instrumental getting beyond the forward to face uh, a force of save from Shamal George and Lammers was on hand then to smack home the rebound. Jose Sifuen says the new signing thought he'd made it too, but VAR said no. Half time, Rangers 1, Livingston 0. Uh, other half times for you, Ross County lead St Johnston by a goal. To nil. It's St Mirren 2, Dundee FC nil. So St Mirren on course for two wins from two at the start of the new season. Let's go into the Scottish Championship. It's Adrianians nil, Partick Thistle 1A, United lead in Vanessa by a goal to nil. It's Dundee United nil, Dunfermline nil, Queen's Park 1, Arbroath nil, and Wraith Rovers 2, Morton 1. Scottish League 1, Alloa nil, Sterling nil, Annan nil, Montrose 3 at the break, Cove Rangers nil, Falkirk nil, Edinburgh City League, Queen of the South by a goal to nil, and it's Kelty Hearts nil, Hamilton to nil. Scottish League 2, Bonnie Rig Rose, a 1-0 up at Clyde at the break. It's Dumbarton nil, Spartans nil and it's nil nil in the games between four for Athletic and Elgin City, Peterhead and Stenhouse Muir and Stranra and East Fife, although Stranra are down to 10 men after 45 minutes. In the National League, Chesterfield 3-0 up at AFC Fylde at half-time. Boreham Wood nil, Halifax nil at South End have taken the lead, so they're 1-0 up at Dagenham and Redbridge. It's nil nil in the games between Dorking and Maidenhead, Eastleigh and Wheel Goldston, uh, Ebbsfleet nil, Solly Hullmore's one is a half-time score. Hartlepool United lead Gateshead by a goal to nil. They were relegated Hartlepool, of course, at the end of last season. Uh, so too were Rochdale. They are currently nil-nil at Oxford City at half-time. Oldham Athletic three, Aldershot nil is a half-time score, as is York City nil, Kidderminster nil, and it is Woking two, Altrincham two at the break. Those are all of the half-time scores. You are up to date uh, right the way around England and Scotland. We've got second half commentary on the way from Brighton who lead Luton by a goal to nil after the news on Five Live with Stuart Clarkson. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. A search is continuing in the English Channel after six people died when a boat carrying migrants sank. More than 50 people were pulled from the water by British and French rescue vessels. The French authorities say there may still be two people missing. The former Cabinet Minister David Davis says the Home Office has displayed staggering incompetence after a barge used to house asylum seekers had to be evacuated. Legionella bacteria was found in the water system of the Bibby Stockholm which is moored in Dorset. The government says the migrants were removed as a precautionary measure. The authorities in Hawaii say they're launching an investigation into the response to the wildfires on Maui that have killed at least 80 people. That number is expected to rise in the coming days. The review will examine whether more could have been done to warn residents. And the US has returned more than 250 ancient artefacts to Italy after police showed they'd been stolen from archaeological sites. The objects include pots, paintings and pieces of sculpture, many of them up to 3,000 years old. The hundred is back. Yeah! Yeah! Balls in total. And the ball counts. Bang it sixes. The 100 on BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. Is it full toss? Oh, it's got to And that's surely the case. Follow the action with BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Steve Crossman. On Five Live, listen on BBC Sounds. Just the one goal in the Premier League in the three o'clock kickoff. Solly marches in our commentary game. It's Brighton 1, Luton Town 0. Arsenal have already got their Premier League campaign off to a winning start. They beat Nottingham Forest by two goals to one. Here's Mikel Arteta. First of all, I think we deserve to win the game. But um, yeah, after the tunnel and the chances that we have, the dominance that we had, the long periods that we were very superior to the opponent, um, we should have killed the game. But um, credit to Forest as well. They hang in there. They they wait for their opportunity. We give them the opportunity um, after the corner, the way they, they counter and score the goal. And, and this is the Premier League. Welcome to the Premier League from day one. You give something to them and, and then it's game on. And then, yeah, we have to play and run the clock down, which is always stressful. It's true that they didn't create a chance, but the feeling is, is not right. 
And after last season, you could feel the fans. You could feel the stadium, couldn't you, with those two nils that went last season? In any game, you know, at the moment that that they score and and the quality, you know, you see the players that they bring from the bench, and, and they are really direct, really good on set plays as well. And uh, you have to suffer, but um, I think the team showed a little bit of composure as well and, and resilience to say, okay, we don't panic. We need to play those games. We need to play those kind of minutes, and are we married to win the game? What about the quality of the goals that you scored in the first half? A great, two great individual actions. Um, that's what you need against teams that are so low, you know, with 10 players very well organized behind the ball, that is so hard to find openings. Is when they break and those moments that they are a bit disorganized um, open up, you have to make the most out of it, and we did it. Three new faces in the starting lineup. Happy with them all? Very happy. Um, obviously, concerned with Jurin because we don't know the extent of that injury, but um, he didn't look comfortable to continue in the second half. But um, the other two, I think they were. Mikel Arteta there with Steve Bauer. Let's go back to Wembley Stadium. For the first time since 1986, none of Leeds, Wigan, Warrington or St Helens are in a Challenge Cup final for the men. So will it be Hull KR or Lee Leopards lifting the trophy? It's half-time. Matt Newsom. Yeah, half-time. It's uh, Hull KR 8, Lee Leopards 10. Uh, it's a final which has kind of borne all the fruits of the fact that these two teams hard here too often. It's been a bit nervy, it's been a little bit scrappy, uh, but at the same time, there have been some decent tries scored. Uh, Hukia, uh, should I say, Lee probably got the better of the game, uh, scoring uh, early on through uh, Reynolds before Jess Litton replied for Hukia. Uh, Lee came roared back with uh, a man in the sim bin for uh, uh, Hukia, but uh, a little tr uh, a goal, should I say, a penalty goal just before half time from Brad Schneider means that at half time, there are just two points in it. It's Hukia 8, Lee Leopards 10. Uh, and in the women's final earlier, St. Helens beat Leeds Rhinos. Let's go into the 100 London spirit against Trent Rockets. Doubleheader this afternoon. Ali Mitchell is watching. Well, the Trent Rockets men have been set a target of 196 if they're to beat London spirit. And that's because Dan Lawrence fell seven runs short of what would have been the first 100 in the 100 this season. He crashed 93 from 49 balls, 10 fours, three sixes. Catch some of those shots on the BBC Sport website. But also a brilliant piece of fielding from Sam Hain for Trent Rockets to save a six right in front of the pavilion where his body was falling back and he parried the ball back in as his body was airborne and parallel to the ground he managed to flick the ball back in right himself field it and send it back in but a lot of damage had already been done by then also from Zach Crawley with a pretty nifty 30 from 15 we're going to see Joe Root back shortly Trent Rockets their chase is underway it'd be a record if they can manage it they need another 193 to win off the last 95 balls and we've got Milan and Hales out there in the middle. So Trent Rockets have got a big chase ahead of them. You can listen to commentary of that via the BBC Sport website. Uh, the other double header is the match between the Welsh Fire and the Southern Brave. Uh, the Welsh Fire women have 137 for three and they have currently off 92 balls. Let's go to the AIG Women's Open at Walton Heath. Ian Carter. So far, so good for Charlie Hull in tough, breezy conditions. Level par through a first five holes. Still in a share of second place at five under par. Lilia Vu and Nelly Corder among the chasing pack. And Ali Ewing, the overnight leader at ten under par. She split, slipped back to nine under. So the lead is four as she plays the fifth. Ian, thank you very much indeed. Right there, back out at Brighton, ready for the second half. It's our first commentary of this new Premier League season. Don't forget, we've got Newcastle versus Aston Villa to come, but it's only half time in Brighton versus Luton. And Steve Sidwell is with Ian Dennis. Thank you, Steve. Now the side has made a change at half time as they're uh, just ready to, uh, to restart. Gives us an opportunity to run through the two teams. Stealing goal for Brighton and Hove Albion. Back four of Milner, Dunk, Van Hecker and Esther Pignan. A midfield of Gross, Dahoud, March with Pedro Welbeck and Matoma. Brighton in their blue and white striped shirts and royal blue shorts. Against the Luton Town side in their orange jerseys with the navy shorts. And they are playing from left to right. They've got Kaminsky in goal, a back three of Bell, Anderson and Lockyer. Kabore and Giles are the wing backs, right and left respectively. Marvellous Nakamba, Ruddock, uh, Chong, Adebayo and Carlton Morris. And the thing is, Steve Sidwell, is that Rob Edwards, they're still in the game. They're only a goal down. And they have created, oh hold on, here is Welbeck picking up a loose ball inside towards Gross. Gross plays it forward, back towards Welbeck. Excellent cover 
from Anderson to run the ball behind for a corner, but they've had chances, have, uh, have Luton. Yep, they have. You know, they've got to be disciplined, diligent, like we've mentioned all throughout this first half, but like what you said, throughout the, uh, the, the last season, they're used to this. This is their model, their, their style of play, so it's no surprise that they're, they're carrying it off to a tee this, this afternoon. Brighton then with that March goal, the difference after 36 minutes wait to take the corner kick far side the right it's an outswing at Carlton Morris really did a, attack that well his only experience of playing top flight football in his career was actually with uh, with Hamilton uh, a number of years ago uh, it was about 15 16 and he scored eight goals in his 32 appearances as the ball drops and it's picked up by by Kaminsky on his Luton Town debut from uh, from Van Hecker and they wait and they have to be patient but uh, Roberto De Zerbi will want a, a second goal just so he can relax a little bit. He will. And that's what I'm sure Rob Edwards has said is let's not give them a sniff. Although Brighton have come out and had a, a, an attack in the first, what, 25 seconds. You know, but they're going to try and get this early goal in the second half. Calm the, uh, the pitch down, to calm the game. That brings Luton out onto them then and expose more spaces. Not too sure if it's a temporary switch, but at the minute... Milner's playing on this near side and Estepina has, has switched to the far side the right. Yep, the fullbacks have swapped. They've obviously seen something there in the, in the analysis at half time to show Deserbi. Jao Pedro picks it up, runs forward with pace. Jao Pedro, who was closed down very, very quickly. It was uh, an important block that was coming in from uh, I think it might have been, was it Pelly Ruddock who was uh, who was back there? It was a very good, strong challenge, but he's He's picked up an injury in the process. Yeah, I think it was. It was good play from Pedro when he gets his side, but you have to take that snapshot really quickly because the more you go inside, the more you're going to get dragged into the recovering players from Luton as well. So you can see there, Luton Town, the amount of players that they've got all near each other as well, you know, within five yards. So in case one, one player skips past one another, someone's there on hand to help out his teammate. So whilst he's uh, getting treatment at the uh, at the moment, Harrogate nil, Forest Green one is a, a latest score in uh, in League Two. And despite it only being two minutes or three minutes into the second half, Rob Edwards already is still getting across uh, a lot more of his instructions to the players to take advantage of this stoppage in play. And with a stoppage in play, we'll take advantage and go to Everton and Lee Blakeman. Everton nil, Fulham nil. Two minutes gone in the second half. Fulham making a change at half-time, though Willian, who had been booked, has been replaced by Bobby Deckard over Reed. Everton nil, Fulham nil. And to Bournemouth, Jonathan Overend. Sweet strike on the volley from David Brooks here. Still nil-nil, but it, he caught it beautifully on the edge of the box. And Ariola had to be very, very alert to that, tipping it over the bar left-handed. Bournemouth nil, West Ham nil, but bright start in the second half from the home side. And we are going to uh, to resume. Now, Pelly Ruddock, because he's off the field of play, he'll have to wait at least 30 seconds before the referee will allow him to come back onto the field uh, so four minutes into the second half so Luton temporarily are down to uh, to ten men <laughs> you can you can see the the fourth official there literally man marking him with yeah. his, his watch looking at it there we go and there he is comes back on he's uh, 29 years of age he's been such a, an excellent service for Luton Town picked up on a on a free nine years ago over 350 appearances for the uh, for the club and the as we said earlier the first player to play in the fifth tier all the way to the premier league with the uh, with the same club whilst you're at the tunnel club at half time uh the um two former captains of both clubs are out here at uh, talking to the crowd uh, steve foster and brian horton got a a lovely ovation from the uh, the luton town supporters both uh, both gentlemen Fozzy and, and Nobby as they were introduced at one point and I know that uh, David Pleat who managed Luton Town the last time they were in the uh, in the top flight is listening to uh, to BBC Radio 5 Live uh, this afternoon finding out how his uh, former club uh, are faring when they were last in the top flight David told me during the week that uh, in fact I'll, I'll wait for that because there's been a goal at Bournemouth Jonathan Overham West Ham take the lead here on the Riviera, Bournemouth nil, West Ham one, and it's Jared Bowen who finished last season so strongly, who starts this one magnificently. It's a left foot curler, past Neto, into the corner, Bournemouth nil, West Ham one. 
Now here's Jao Pedro has been checked outside the area. Anderson has been shown a yellow card for Luton Town and Brighton have got a, a free kick. But before the free kick, a goal at Bramall Lane, Tom Gale. The visitors are ahead, Ian. Sheffield United nil, Palace one. Jordan Ayew's nice sidestep, gets to the byline, ball across into that corridor of uncertainty. In sliding is Odson Edward for a tap in. Sheffield United nil, Palace one. This is a, a troubling time for Luton Town. They've got to defend this free kick. Brighton, who are playing from right to left as we look on the left hand side, about six yards up from the byline. March and Gross are the two who stand over it. It's an extremely congested six-yard box, isn't it, for the goalkeeper? I was going to say, what's more congested, that six-yard box or this press box? I don't know. Well, I thought you were going to say the M25. I know <laughs> there was a few traffic problems for supporters to, to get to the Amex uh, today, as uh, it's certainly a lot of bodies, and Kaminsky with his arms up in the air, bobbing up and down on his goal line as it's March who touches it towards Gross, Gross fires it in and Kaminsky as well on his near post, kept alive by Dunk, bit of a scramble inside the penalty area and in fact the referee will give a free kick because there was a hand in there and uh, but a very good save from Kaminsky, bearing in mind we're talking about how incited he was. Yeah, a really clever play there, Sonny March just tapping it to Pascal Gross who whips it towards that post, I don't think Kaminsky got a touch, it looked like he hit the post and from the sound of it as well, it ricocheted out but again Luton just running their luck there. Could have fell for any number of players in that six-yard box and it fell to Luton player. His former club Blackburn are now 2-0 down at Rotherham in the Championship. And in League Two, Swindon Town have increased their lead at home to Crewe. Swindon Town 2, Crewe nil. So, yeah, so David, David Pleat's attention to detail is remarkable. So we were talking in the, uh, in the week and he was telling me, and he knew straight away when I said, oh, about that season, he said, yep. Yeah, he said, uh, Notts County, 1-2-1, one, one. Matthews got both the goals. And then he said, you know what was amazing that season? He said, during that season, there was on 11 occasions, they'd taken the lead, they didn't win, didn't win one. Anyway, I checked it. They, uh, five draws, sorry, six draws and five defeats after, uh, on, in games where they'd taken the lead. I mean, there were other games where they did win and take the lead. There were 16 in total where they scored the first goal, but he knew straight away that on 11 occasions, well, Luton Town, if they're to survive, if they're given the lead in these occasions, are going to have to then try and hold on to them, aren't they? Oh, David P, a proper, proper footballing man there, isn't he? And they're the ones that know, doesn't matter how well they do, there's always the, the little slight 1% that sometimes go against them that they always focus on. Could have been such a, a different story, and who knows, they could have been in the first season in the, uh, in the Premier League. There were fine margins that season in uh, 31 years ago and here they are Luton Town when uh, you think that 10 years ago they began the season in the conference they spent four seasons then in League Two League One then four in the championship Rob Edwards of course there was a, a moment before kickoff where he just looked at the Luton support and there was a there was a glowing look on his face of pride and I'm sure that is replicated as well with Nathan Jones who has had an instrumental part in the rise of, uh, of Luton Town up through the uh, the divisions. Nathan Jones, who was with us earlier in uh, Arsenal, beating Nottingham Forest by two goals to one in the early game. We've got commentary to come of Newcastle against Aston Villa on BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. West Brom 2, Swansea nil is a, a latest score. The latest from Bournemouth, Jonathan Oberen. Good response to Bournemouth from going a goal down. Solanke fended off Aguirre. He was just too strong on the inside right channel and forced a really good save from Ariola at his near post. It's Bournemouth nil, West Ham 1. March was just shown uh, offside and he's still complaining to the to the assistant referee on that far side. I, I think the, the officials are quite happy for the emotion of the game. It's when they step beyond that. Yeah. Yeah, he thought he was timed, he's, he's run perfectly, but it was right next to the assistant referee that the flag was straight up. But just touching back what you said there, Deno, about you know, Rob Edwards and Nathan Jones, and it feels like there's a real connection, isn't there, between the, the players, the staff, the fans. There's a real community there, and they're going to need that more than ever this season. Well, they're still in this game. They're only a goal down, and they're, they're not afraid to, uh, to come forward, but it's been cleared away by De Hood. Laid back by Welbeck. Jao Pedro stopped by Anderson, steps forward. Got a real presence about him as the, uh, the defender, the Danish defender. He's six foot five, fair haired. Morris, Chong, touched the ball forward to 
Kabore. Kabore now into Morris. The return ball. They're appealing for handball there against Estepinian, who actually now is playing back in his position. So that switch of fullbacks didn't last too long between Milner and Estepinian. Brighton send March away, scampering after it. And now there's ironic cheers of handball from the Brighton supporters, mocking Luton's appeals. Yeah, it did look like it struck the hand of the Estepinian, man, but not sure if there's going to be a review on that or not. Unintentionally, of course. Steve Sidwell, who's with us here in this uh, cramped commentary position at the at the Amex, Adebayo takes it on the side of Anderson, uh, sorry, uh, on the side of Van Hecker, rather. Van Hecker actually sees it behind, and the Luton supporters urging their team on. Raucous backing behind that goal away towards our right. They've got a corner kick. Well, that is the 1v1 and 2v2 situations I was talking about in terms of Adebayo and Morris just pinning Van Heck and dunk back. If one skips through, they're in on goal there. Just relieved the corner there for Luton Town. So in front of that away support, you uh, know where the away fans are housed. They're away towards our right-hand side here at the Amex. They're craning their necks, so many of them in the uh, the orange jerseys for this corner kick, taken by Giles, it's deep from the right, Dunk heads it and actually then retrieves it himself as he chases after it and then plays the ball forward towards Gross. And now Luton's shirts are flooding back because Gross will try a long sweeping diagonal ball towards Matoma, but two bounces and it's out of play for a throw. It's tight in the, men, the men's Challenge Cup final, the latest at uh, Wembley's Hull KR 10, Lee 10. Commentary continues on Sports Extra, the iPlayer, it's live also on BBC One. Newport County have got a fourth goal, Newport 4, Doncaster Rovers nil in League Two. Don't forget, next week, both of the Women's World Cup semi-finals live on Five Live. It'll be Sweden-Spain on Tuesday morning, and then the small matter of Australia against England on Wednesday morning. Both games live on Five Live. Another goal in League One, a featured game. It's at Brisbane Road, Sheridan Robbins. Six minutes into the second half, it's Leighton Orient nil, Portsmouth three. A great cross in from Gavin White, headed into his own net by captain Omar Beckles. It's Leighton Orient nil, Portsmouth three. Commentary to come from St. James's Park. Two commentaries tomorrow, Five Live Premier League Sunday. Uh, Brentford Spurs from two, Chelsea Liverpool at 4.30. We've got five live boxing tonight and Anthony Joshua uh, from 10 o'clock. The Anthony Joshua fight on five live from 10 this evening. Goodison Park, Everton Fulham, Lee Blakeman. Everton nil, Fulham nil, Fulham have had their best chance just inside the area. Jimenez has just hit the, sh the foot of the post and Fulham's motto, if in doubt, bring Mitrovic out. On he comes, Everton nil, Fulham nil. Matoma, Estepinian combining. Now Matoma goes down, and that'll be a yellow card for Issa Kabore, the uh, Burkina Faso defender, for a foul on uh, Matoma. That triangle there of Matoma, Estupanan, and uh, Pedro, they really link up well, really fluid. You know, we can see them getting in behind there, and Kabore there bringing back, again, not intentional, I think it was just a, a collision of legs. Just gone quarter past four this Saturday afternoon live on five live and the world service there is a delay for the free kick there's a goal at Notts County shows you Osaka Notts County two Grimsby Town at two Jody Jones uh, taking a shot from the left wing taking a slight defection and looping over the Grimsby keeper Jake Eastwood Notts County two Grimsby two the attendance is 31,672 here at the uh, the Amex as these two sides Indeed, it's only the, the second season that they've met in the uh, in the top flight. As March and Gross wait to take the free kick, Gross right-footed curls it in. Carlton Morris lets that ball bounce, and then he sliced the clearance off his left foot, trying to get the ball away. Drops on the edge of the area, headed further away by Adebayo. Out of play, it will go for uh, for a Brighton throw. The 64th meeting in total, the previous ones, over half, were in the old 3rd Division South. But here they are, Luton Town, in their 17th season in the top flight. But the first after an absence of 31 years, none of the last four Premier League debutants, Bournemouth, Huddersfield, Brighton and Brentford have been relegated. Last team making their debut in the Premier League to get relegated were Cardiff. Ten years ago, 
Now, the referee's just been called across on the far side. He's having a word with Pelly Ruddock and Lockyer. There was a, a thumping tackle from Pelly Ruddock on James Milner. And the robust, robust midfielder just, or right back, just got on with it. Didn't say anything. There was a, a fine tackle, really. I just want to see in the replay now. It was ball first, then player. And James Milner, as he is, got straight back up. And near enough congratulated him as well. So it'll be a free kick to Brighton midway through the Luton Town half. Been playing for just over an hour. 61 minutes here on BBC Radio 5 Live. There's some dark skies, despite the sun shining. There's some dark skies hovering over the Amex. Brighton with March, the goal scorer, still leading 1-0. He sends over a cross and it drops, bounces and away and out for a goal kick. You have to say, after an hour's play, Rob Edwards would be absolutely delighted with this Luton Town team because they've near enough nullified them to just a, a handful of chances um, to one of the most creative teams in the Premier League last season. So hats off to how well they trained, and this, especially throughout pre-season, but this week, especially for the build-up to this, this first game. They're not playing next weekend because Kenilworth Road's uh, not ready, so the match against Burnley has been postponed. So the next in action again on their travels at, uh, at Chelsea on the uh, on the Friday night, the uh, the 25th. The first home game, that most all-important game at Kenilworth Road against West Ham United on September the 1st. That will be an occasion for all Luton Town supporters to uh, to cherish and to say, I was there. Another goal at Southampton in the Championship. Paul Scott. 56 minutes on the clock. It is Southampton 3, Norwich 3. It's the substitute Shea Adams with a lovely finish from the edge of the area. Across the face of goal and into the bottom corner. We are all square at St Mary's. Saints 3, Norwich 3. Not so many goals in the Premier League, but Brighton are threatening now. This is Welbeck. He plays it in towards Gross. He tees up Solly March. March looking for the shooting opportunity. Beaten out by the goalkeeper, Kaminsky. Welbeck goes down. Referee says no penalty. David Coote had a really good view of that. Roberto De Zerbi is pleading with the fourth official. Of course, VAR will have a look at it. I mean, you, the question is, you look at Danny Welbeck and saying, surely he's not going to go down without being touched. There was a few, there was a lot of bodies there. I know David Coote was a good five, six yards away. He's just waiting there, so looking at the replay, there was contact, but not intentional at all and that was the right call a, a very good call in fact so Luton now are going to make a, a, a double change and um, we're going to see one of their new players that they brought in Jacob Brown he only arrived this week from Stoke City in fact he was on the score sheet for Stoke against Rotherham last week so uh, Brown is going to come on and then the other change is going to be Alfie Doughty who uh, is another former Stoke City player Let's get an update from Jonathan Overend at Bournemouth. Bournemouth hit the bar. They trail West Ham 1-0, but they're getting close to the home side. This time, Joe Rothwell cutting in from the left. He took his time. He was patient. He waited for the right opportunity. Curled it right-footed, but hit the bar with Ariola beaten. Bournemouth 0, West Ham 1. It remains. So it was Kabore, uh, the right wing back, who's gone off. Adebayo has also gone off. He's been replaced by Jacob Brown. So Alfie Doherty comes on to, uh, to replace him. Two changes being made by Rob Edwards as they still trail by a goal to nil. Not many other goals as we were saying around in the uh, in the Premier League so far. Arsenal earlier did beat Forest by two goals to one. Bournemouth trailing there as we just heard from Jonathan. Everton Fulham remains nil nil. Sheffield United nil Crystal Palace one. We've got commentary at 5.30. Newcastle United against Villa. Let's get an update from Portman Road. Charlie Slater. Oh, hold on. Before we do, here is uh, Luton with attack up towards Morris. Goes down under the challenge at the far post behind for a corner. Almost a chance there for, uh, for Luton Town. They get a corner. Will nip to Charlie. 61 on the clock. Ipswich on the attack here. Ipswich 1. Stoke nil. Great game that we've got on here. That's going to be a corner to Ipswich. No a goal kick. Surely more goals in this. But 1-0 to Ipswich against Stoke. 
Well, straight away, there's going to be a little bit... Alfred Doherty has just got a, a bang on the back of the head, so there's just been a stoppage in play before that that corner kick. Preston 2, Sunderland 1, Fleetwood 0, Cambridge 2, Mansfield 2, Morecambe 0, Swindon 2, Crew 1. The goals as they go in on BBC Radio 5 Live. Luton Town in front of their expectant travelling support. Still only trailing by a goal to nil. Giles, corner kick, left-hand side. Welbeck climbs, heads it behind for another corner. Luton are giving it a go. They are, you know, they're, they're in this game the whole way until it's 1 0. They are in this game there. You can see Giles there sending these players, look, commit your run. I can put the ball on the button. You make sure you get there. Giles once again. Come on, Luton, is the chant. Corner kick, left hand side. Morris was in there. Slice clearance by March inside his own penalty area. Headed back. Lockyer with the volley left footed. But I think the referee's whistle had blown anyway. We'll get an update from Bramall Lane, Tom Gale. Sheffield United nil, Palace 1. I'm sure this might make match of the day. Roy Hodgson, 76 years of age, squaring up against Sheffield United's Max Lowe. The Sheffield United man pushed him in the stomach trying to retrieve the ball back. He wasn't happy. Sheffield United nil, Palace 1. Did the referees take any action though, Tom? So, you know, we did. I'm sure you're aware of that briefing about the te uh, behaviour in technical areas. Preston 2, Sunderland 1, Hull 2, Sheffield Wednesday 1 now is at a latest scoreline. We're approaching the midway point of the second half here at the Amex. This still isn't over. It still isn't over and you just feel that, that away support now behind that Brighton goal. Urging that team towards it, sucking that ball into the net and if it does go in there, it is going to erupt. Esther Pinyan gets it back from Pedro. Now uh, Dahoud slips it through, short forward ball along the ground. Jao Pedro, Gross had come central, Nakamba gets it away, Brighton no win it back, now it's with Matoma, Estepinian on the overlap, here is Estepinian, lifts it into the air in the penalty area, Lockie with a downward header for Luton, picked up now by Brown, gets a second chance to get it up towards Carlton Morris, Van Hecker has uh, tight behind him, Ruddock looking to, uh, to turn in that midfield for, uh, for Luton, picks out Chong as well, now here is Doherty, just outside the centre circle, of his own half. Giles forward over on that far side. Committing shirts forward. Luton Town looking for an equaliser. It's a good cross and Van Hecker rises. Comes off the uh, the Dutch defender and it's a Luton throw about six yards up from the corner flag on the right hand side. Those Luton Town fans believe. They are indeed. They are enjoying this. Good play from Luton Town there. Nice and relaxed. Not just getting the ball forward as quickly as possible. Taking their time. Composure. Waiting for an opening using every bit of beta grass, trying to move these Brighton players now themselves. We'll try and bring you as much reaction as we can in Sports Report, the results and the reaction before we have commentary from St. James's Park at 5.30. But Brighton and Hove Albion still only leading by a goal to nil. Goals are plenty meanwhile at St. Mary's. Paul Scott. We thought we had a seven. Norwich thought they were 4-3 up, but Ashley Barnes tap in from close range, disallowed for offside. It remains Southampton three, Norwich three. Queen's Park Rangers have got a second at Cardiff City. Cardiff nil, QPR two is a latest score in the championship. An update now from Goodison Park, Lee Blakeman. Everton nil, Fulham nil, great chance for Everton, Iwobi shot, edge of the area, great save Leno, full stretch away to his left, Patterson on the follow-up, six yards out, hit the crossbar, nil nil. Matoma, good footwork, Jao Pedro goes down far too easily, oh no, the referee's given the penalty! Jao Pedro, Luton protest! I think he was lucky the defender, I've got to say that's a soft penalty. It really was it. Seemed as though David Boot took his time to the whistle. It was great play from Mitoma. The ball was stuck to his feet the way he just jinked. And Pedro just touched the ball away from Lucky, who just eases his way into Pedro. And I think it's a soft foul for me. I think this needs to be looked at again. It's not as if he's in control of the ball, Pedro, as he goes away. The touch is quite heavy. You can see there, re lip reading there, Lucky, very, very soft referee. There, there, there is an arm from the Luton defender, but Xiao Pedro, when he, once that contact was initiated, took full advantage and dropped to his knees. He was near enough on his way down, was he? Waiting for that contact. That's well, very, very soft for me. Well, the VAR's had a look at it. Deemed that it's not a clear and obvious error. And this will rub salt into the wounds of Luton Town, the former Watford player. 
João Pedro on penalty duties. He's taken over that from Pascal Gross. João Pedro waits for this penalty kick. The former Watford man runs forward now and scores. Brighton's club record signing. He scored all three penalties for Watford. And he's off the mark, off the spot for Brighton Hope Albion, who lead against the Premier League debutants by two goals to nil. And there's been a goal in Meadow Lane, Shojo Saka. Notts County are ahead, 3-2 against Grimsby Town. A delicious cross from the left by Jody Jones and a diving header from Dan Crowley into the net. Notts County 3, Grimsby 2. That'll be a talking point on Match of the Day, though, later on BBC One for sure. Well, the Luton Town bench are absolutely furious there. They're looking at it, and as soon as the referee gave the decision, they was off, charging in onto the sideline. And just look at the replays again, and it is soft, it is. He does go down a bit easy, but the decision is given. And Pedro got up, showed his composure, grabbed the ball, waited for the referee to blow his whistle. And Kaminsky, I think he got a hand to it as well. He was unlucky not to save it, but he's off the mark. Can't help but feel that that's uh, a little harsh on, uh, on Luton Town, who had uh, been doing their utmost to get back onto uh, to level terms and João Pedro and uh, that's the reason why he's he's in many people's fantasy teams fantasy football teams because he's on penalty duties now for Brighton and Hove Albion and of course the fantasy football podcast on BBC Radio 5 Live with Alistair Bruce Ball and Chris Sutton is uh, available as it is through the 5 Live football daily feed now all of a sudden we're going to have a, a triple change for, for Brighton and Hove Albion they're going to be making a number of changes very, very soon. We're in the second half. You're listening to BBC Radio 5 Live at a nearly half past four on this Saturday afternoon and the World Service. And where are we going to go next? On the Premier League. I think we're going to go to Jonathan Overend. Are we at Bournemouth? Uh, always a pleasure. Unexpected, but always a pleasure. Bournemouth nil, West Ham won. That goal from Jared Bowen must give a shout to Pablo Fornals for the role he played in in the build-up to that goal, dispossessing Rothwell in midfield. Bowen's goal was beautiful. And can West Ham hold on to this lead? 1-0 at Bournemouth. And I should have gone to Tom Gale at Bramall Lane. Sheffield United nil, Palace won. Ian, the visitors with another disallowed goal. Tyreek Mitchell wide left of the box, sent the ball low to the back post. Odson Edward tapped in, but the Frenchman had strayed offside. Sheffield United nil, Palace won. Apologies to producer Claire and the studio, but Overs was always alert, as is Lee Blakeman at Goodison. Everton nil, Fulham nil, Arnaut Tanjim is coming on to make his Everton debut, replacing Neil Mopé just seconds after Harry Wilson struck over the crossbar from the edge of the area for Fulham. Still Everton nil, Fulham nil, 18 to play. The so is getting a standing ovation as he's coming off. Triple change is being made. He's going to be replaced by Billy Gilmore. Let's get the team news from St. James's Park ahead of the commentary of Newcastle Villa, John Murray. Well, last season's top scorer for Newcastle, Callum Wilson, is only a substitute for the start of this one. Isaac is preferred up front. Tonali makes his league debut, but other signings, Barnes and Livramento, are substitutes. Only one new signing in the Villa team as well. That's Musa Diaby. Kielemans and Pau Torres are both on the bench, so Dina starts at left back. A goal at Goodison, Lee Blakeman. It's a nil, Fulham one, and it's the substitute Bobby Decord over Reed, who got on the end of a cross, a tap in at the back post. Everton, so many chances to go ahead in this game, find themselves behind. Everton nil, Fulham one. Thought it was going to be a triple change. At the time being, they've just resisted the urge to bring on Ferguson. He looked like he was going to be coming on as well. But instead, we've got Billy Gilmore, who's replaced Ahud, and uh, also making his debut, Simon Adingra, who's an Ivory Coast forward. He was actually signed from Norseland in 2022 for £6 million. But last season, he was out at the uh, the, the satellite club for uh, for Brighton and Hove Albion, Union saint Gilwar in, uh, in Belgium as uh, Luton Town on the attack, far side, but it clips over the cross, Carlton Morris was there, edge of the area, Pedro gets it away, Brighton still lead 2-0, so Dingra comes on, scored 11 goals in his 36 appearances in, uh, in Belgian football, and Luton are going to be making another change as well, but that second goal has just deflated the, uh, the Premier League newcomers. Yeah, it's just... Got a few Brighton fans back on their seat, a bit more comfortable sitting there. There was a, a few nerves, you could feel a bit of tension then running through the stadium, but 
They seem to have control now, really dominate, dominating the ball, moving this Luton team. The, Still static in their positions, making it hard for Brighton. Looking forward to to watching the Dingra that's come on. Heard good things about him. A lot of success in the Belgian league. He's obviously must have done something right for them to, to bring him back and throw him into the mix, especially the first game of the season. Huddersfield nil, Leicester 1 is the latest score in the championship. I will be running through all the latest scores. Stevenage leading Shrewsbury 1-0. Notts County 3, Grimsby 2, Bradford have completely turned it around, Bradford City at Valley Parade, Bradford City 2, Colchester United 1, Colchester were leading at Sinsel Bank, Lincoln have now got a second goal, Lincoln 2, Wickham 0, that's in, the, in League 1, and uh, here it's going to be, well, they're going to dispense with the back three, so Mads Anderson has come off, and uh, another debutant for Luton Town, Chidozi Ogbeni, who's a, a real pacey winger, Republic of Ireland International, so he's going to come on for uh, for Mads Anderson as Rob Edwards looks to try and get something back from this game with, what, 14 minutes remaining of normal time, a minimum, um, because of course then we will have the, uh, the added on time from the officials with the injuries, uh, the substitutions, which this season now used to be estimated at 30 seconds, it's exact time for changes that are made, goals as well exact time so there will be a lot of additional time could be interesting back in the studio as well if they're worried about me handing to the wrong wrong reporter at the wrong ground wait for sports report and the pressure at five o'clock might be coming at two minutes past five or even later this season at various times so well though he's going to stop players sometimes thinking about time wasting and a lot of pros have been committed to that Jao pedro wins the ball off the camber edge of the area Welbeck takes over, looking for the shooting opportunity, going the long way round, back heels the ball towards Matoma, and Nakamba gets it away for Luton Town. Doherty on this near side, hits it left-footed forward. Now, looking in pursuit of that is Brown. Keeps the ball in play, he's done well. No, he didn't. Got out of play for, uh, for a throw. We will see the, uh, the sight of, uh, of Ferguson. It's going to be another double change for Brighton. Whilst that's happening, we will go back to Bramall Lane. Tom Gale. Sheffield United nil, Palace 1. Ian, the closest the home side have come to an equaliser. Quick distribution from goalkeeper Fodering up top to Triori, who found his strike partner, Asulu. It rippled the side net in one of those where the home fans thought it was in. But it's still Sheffield United nil, Palace 1. So, Evan Ferguson is uh, coming on. It's Danny Welbeck who comes off. Ferguson, who did ever so well last season, the, uh, the young Irish forward with 10 goals that he scored last season. And Joel Veltman is going to be coming off. And James Milner, in his 22nd Premier League campaign, gets a standing ovation. Already he's proven to be popular and he's got a warm embrace from Roberto De Zerbi as he is replaced by Joel Veltman, who signed a new two-year deal in the summer. Yeah, great shift from... James Milner today, looking fresh, young as ever, getting around the pitch, showing leadership skills. We need to be calm on the ball when it didn't. When it needs to be turned over quickly. Brown with the cross, appealing for handball there. Luton Town referee has a look at it and gives it. It yep. was a cross that was fired in, and the referee David Coote, after a little bit of hesitation, awards Luton Town the penalty. Brighton protest. Lie side straight away and just pure down to the, the distance of the cross and where Lewis Dunk was. I mean, he has turned his back. It is these reverse arm. I thought, I thought it was his other, um, his near side arm that led, but he's actually turned his back and can't even control the back end of his elbow. But uh, looks as though it's been given. Yeah, I mean, is it deliberate? No, but are his arms away from the body? Yes. And for that reason, this penalty will be awarded, I'm sure, once VAR has confirmed it. And Carlton Morris has the ball tucked under his right arm. 20 goals last season, the best of his career. And that penalty kick is going to take place once VAR, you would think, has had a look at it. West Brom 3, Swansea 1 is the latest score in the championship. Wigan 1, Northampton 1 is the latest score in League 1. So, 10 minutes remain. There will be a lot of added on time. Luton Town, who really have contributed to this game, they've been spirited. It's Carlton Morris up against Jason Steele. 
Brighton the moment lead by two goals to nil. It's in front of the Luton support. Morris runs up and rolls it into the left-hand corner, right-footed. Carlton Morris, the first goal scorer in the Premier League for Luton Town, reduces the arrears and gives that travelling support hope. Brighton two, Luton one. Well, what composure there from Morris for such an historic goal for Luton Town Football Club. He walks up to the ball, he stops, he stutters, and he puts it to the wrong place of Jason Steele. And again, Luton Town are well back in this football game. Certainly are. It's still Hull KR 10, Lee 16, incidentally, in the Challenge Cup final at Wembley. Commentary continues on Sports Extra. Hull City 3, Sheffield Wednesday 1. Blackburn have got a goal back also in the Championship. Rotherham 2, Blackburn 1. Now a goal at Bournemouth, Jonathan Overend. Equaliser for Bournemouth, and Dominic Solanke has scored it, rounding Ariola to finish neatly, but in truth, it was a really fluky goal because Antoine Semenya off the bench tried a shot from distance. He completely mishit it, but it turned in to the best pass of the season. Uh, Bournemouth won, West Ham won. So two penalties here at the Amex. Brighton's was a, a, a soft award. And then they were aggrieved themselves when Lewis Dunk adjudged to have handled from Brown's cross. And it's going to make for a rather nervy eight minutes that remain. It will, when you have to say, really, on the face of it, that both penalties were soft. You know, you don't like to see them given. But Luton Town are well and truly back into this football game. And as you say, now Brighton could get jittery, sit back. That could commit then Luton Town players further up the pitch. They've got some size. Going to get it up, let it stick. Maybe get the ball out wide for crosses. Well... Luton Town are uh, just going to get back in numbers at the moment. Jao Pedro has got plenty of pace released on the left-hand side. Matoma in support, takes it in his stride towards the byline, fires over the cross. Couldn't quite fall to Adingra for Brighton and Hove Albion. You kind of feel that's just been the story of Brighton this afternoon. They've got into real good positions. They've, they've cut the ball back and it's just not fell for a Brighton player, is it? More often than not, it's gone in advantage of the Luton Town player. On other days, it could easily fall for a, a, a striker or a, a, a midfield player wearing the blue and white shirt that taps it in the, into the net two or three times. It's the voice of Steve Sidwell on BBC Radio 5 Live in the World Service. Latest scores in the Scottish Premiership. Rangers still lead Livingston by a goal to nil. Ross County 2, St Johnston nil, St Mirren 2, Dundee 1. Give you League 2, League 1 and the Championship in a moment. Sports report coming up. Results and reaction. The Dingra sent scampering away. The Ivorian forward. Giles in that foot chase. Sees it off for a throw to Brighton. As uh, running forward to take it with his blue and white striped shirt. Rippling in the breeze on the south coast. There's even a patch of blue sky. Those threatening skies never delivered the rain. That uh, did have a shower or two ahead of kickoff as the ball is headed back by Gross appealing for handball on that far side wall ball won by Gilmore runs through to the goalkeeper Kaminsky wants to release it downfield but instead then drops it towards Lockyer who clears it away downfield up towards Morris Van Hecker does well in that aerial duel now the ball is played forward and Luton at the minute not getting enough men back as uh, Jao Pedro to Matoma. Once again, they combined down the left-hand side. Oh, that was a clumsy challenge. That actually looked more of a penalty from Nakamba on the initial one that got them a penalty when uh, Lockyer on Pedro. Here is Estepina with a shot. Parried away by Kaminsky. And then Ruddock. Oh, Brian got a third goal. Loon never dealt with it. And Adingra, on his debut, pounced and rifled the ball past Kaminsky. A goal really out of nothing. Luton dawdled in defence and were punished. And Brighton and Hove Albion have surely sealed the three points. Now they lead by three goals to one. Well, I think the whole stadium was waiting for that passage of play to be brought back because it looked a certain penalty from where we were sitting. They didn't deal with it, Luton. They kind of half cleared their lines. It ricocheted up into the air. And a Dingra, well, just coming on after, what, five, ten minutes, Rifles it into the back of the net. Wasn't dealt with at all from Luton Town. It was a penalty, isn't it? That was give it away very, very cheaply in, in this division. You're going to get punished. 
giving the ball away like that in your own six yard box but take nothing away from Adingra on his debut rifles it past Kaminsky's he's near post and surely now that is it for Brighton yeah 3-1 they lead and uh, a goal on his debut for Adingra Talking of goals, another one at Ibrox, Colin McLaughlin. Rangers 2, Livingston nil, and Danilo doubled Rangers lead. The crowd were growing agitated for that second goal after some wasteful play, and it came in the form of a header from close range. It's Rangers 2, Livingston nil. Goal of Paul Monroe, Charlie Slater. 81 on the clock, Ipswich 2, Stoke nil. Surely the three points are theirs now. Beautiful build-up play from back to front. Caden Jackson with the goal, 2-0 to Ipswich. We almost had a fourth. It was Ferguson, Evan Ferguson, with a turn and a right-footed curling effort that hit the right-hand post. That would have been the best of the lot. They would, wouldn't it? And they outnumbered the Luton Town defenders. Evan Ferguson there just caressing the ball with a touch, nipping it back inside, and they're trying to wrap his foot around it into that far corner. And just punches against the far post and then rifles across the face of the goal. Great delivery and great chance. And Brighton are attacking and Matoma, they're looking to cut loose here at the moment, but uh, Luton Town still just can't get hold of the ball. Ball played forward to Ferguson, back with uh, with Gilmore, they're probing João Pedro, out it goes to Esther Pinan. Brian and Hope Albion lead by three goals to one, it's rolled in towards Gross. Gross looking to turn, pulls it back, and the shot was a tame one from João Pedro. They're good at some part, Lee Blakeman. Everton nil, Fulham one, Everton so close to an equaliser. Ball over the top, found Iwobi, unmarked, back post, and Leno was on hand to save again. He's having a great game, Everton nil, Fulham one. We're going to have three more changes very, very soon. The additional time here is going to be interesting. These are the latest scores in League Two. Wimbledon 1, Wrexham 1. Barrow 2, the 10 men of Sutton United 1. They were leading by a goal to nil. Bradford City have also come from behind as they lead Colchester United by two goals to one. Gillingham lead Accrington by a goal to nil. Harrogate nil, Forest Green 1. MK Dons 1, Tranmere nil. Mansfield 2, Morecambe nil. Newport 4, Doncaster nil. Notts County 3, Grimsby Town 2. Salford 1, Crawley 1, Swindon 2. Two, crew one, Walsall two, Stockport County nil. So Pelly Ruddock has come off. He's still beating himself up, I think, with a mistake that led to the third goal. He's been replaced by Paulie Woodrow. And Brighton have made a change. Pedro's come off. And, and CISO has come on. Let's get an update from Bramall Lane, Tom Gale. Sheffield United nil, Palace won, but Wes Fodderin, 32 years of age, making a stunning save for the Blades on his Premier League debut. Wide left, Eze floats the cross in, Anderson from four yards can't beat the keeper. Sheffield United nil, Palace won. Thank you, Tom. Latest scores in League One then. Bristol Rovers 1, Barnsley 1, Burton nil, Derby 2, Cheltenham nil, Bolton 3. They are... Well, one of the sides who's won both of their games are in the process of doing that so far this season. Exeter nil, Blackpool nil, Fleetwood nil, Cambridge two, Lake Norian nil, Portsmouth three, Lincoln three, Wickham nil, Oxford one, Carlisle nil, Peterborough one, Charlton nil, Port Vale one, Reading nil, Stevenage one, Shrewsbury nil, Wigan Athletic two, Northampton one. Let's get an update from Bournemouth with Jonathan Overend. Really exciting match this has turned into. Bournemouth one, West Ham one. Solanke with the equaliser nine minutes from time, but then just 90 seconds later, Pakita hitting the post up the other end. That's the second time in the afternoon. West Ham have hit the frame of the goal. Bournemouth one, West Ham one. Luke Berry, incidentally, was the other change replacing Chong for uh, for Luton Town. Kaminsky's just kept out Gross as well. Is, what a what a goal that would have been! The link up there started from still, and the way that Brighton play, the link up play that they play within their own six yard box, eighteen yard box, and then it drifted its way out. And Pascal Gross, as he does all as ever, the little chop and Cruyff dummies the player. Great save from Kaminsky. We're going to find out how much additional time there will be as the ball is played in short. A dinger with the footwork. Uh, there he keeps the ball from going behind for a, a corner kick. Give you the championship latest scores in a moment. Sports report coming up at the end of this game. St. James's Park, we've got commentary of Newcastle Aston Villa on five live to come. Then it's 6.06, Esther Pinion wins a corner. There's been another goal at Rangers, Conor McLaughlin. Rangers 3, Livingston L capitulation from a Livingston perspective, but delight if you're a Rangers fan inside Ibrox. It was the new signing and substitute Seema who got on the end of the ball, who managed actually, it hit the inside of the bar and came out. It looked as if it was going wide, but he managed to get on the end of it and put it past Shamal George in the Livingston goal. Rangers 3, Livingston 0. 3-1 to Brighton here. 
Corner taken short, back heel from uh, from Gross to uh, to Adingra. Seven minutes, a minimum of additional time. Cross comes in, just Dunk couldn't keep it in play. Over his head and out of go. It goes for a goal kick. Goal at Southampton. Paul Scott. Six minutes to go. It is Southampton three, Norwich four. The visitors retaking the lead. It is the substitute Christian Fasnax after some uncertain defending from captain Jack Stevens at the back. He drilled it in from six yards. Saints three, Norwich four. The result earlier was Coventry City three, Middlesbrough nil. The, uh, the latest scores, Birmingham City nil, Leeds United nil, Cardiff one, Queen's Park Rangers two, Leicester still lead at Huddersfield by a goal to nil, Hull City three, Sheffield Wednesday one, Ipswich Town two, Stoke City nil, Millwall, Bristol City is goalless, at Deepdale, Preston still leads Sunderland by two goals to one, Rotherham down to ten men two, Blackburn Rovers two, Southampton three, Norwich four as we just heard from Paul, Watford and Plymouth is goalless at Vicarage Road, West Bromwich Albion three, Swansea City two. They're staging a bit of a fight back at Swansea. They were three nil down in the uh, in the Premier League. There's still been no change. Arsenal beat Forest two one earlier. Bournemouth one, West Ham one, three one here to Brighton. Everton nil, Fulham one, Sheffield United nil, Crystal Palace one. Here is Enciso held up by Lockyer. Nakamba tidies up. Back to the goalkeeper Kaminsky. Steve Sidwell. We have to say of what we played now. 91 minutes. This is. But the last four or five minutes is the first time that Luton have been on, on the ropes having a wobble. That could be down to the substitutions that was made as well. But they've been outstanding this game. And it's uh, Luton who are coming forward on that far side, the left now. And Giles provides the support. His cross is a, is a deep one. And that was a, a, an effort that Brown has come back to him quite quickly. Right footed, volleyed over. First time just over the crossbar. Steele must have got a touch to that, it's going to be a home for a corner. Well, they're still going. Curly, Curly Woodrow there at the far post of a, a real brave header. Looked like there was a clash of heads there. They got made his way back into the box. And still just tips it over. Mansfield 3, Morecambe 0, Burton 0, Derby County 3. Lincoln 3, Wickham 0, the latest scores. Corner kick from the left-hand side. Might come to, uh, to Woodrow, hooks it in. Steele has gone AWOL and it dropped to Carlton Morris and his header he couldn't keep down it looping over the top of the crossbar Brighton still lead by three goals to one we're in the third minute of the seven to be added on how much added on at Goodison Park Lee Blakeman six added on Ian we're into the second of them now Everton nil Fulham one another Everton chance there were Wobie with another cross this time Tarkovsky header back post across the face a goal and it just went wide another Everton chance goes begging Fulham lead one nil I think another goal for Brighton that would be harsh on Luton Town wouldn't it yeah yeah it would be they've uh, they've been very very well disciplined in this in this game Luton Town you know I think as, it, as the games wore on and tiredness has come in the substitutions just takes half a yard split seconds at this level and you will get punished Giles again with a, a cross in a little bit too close to Jason Steele who dives at his near post and stays down on his dark goalkeeping outfit away towards our right hand side but uh, Brighton and Hove Albion leading here by three goals to one I think the turning point was that second goal for Brighton that yeah. penalty decision yeah definitely I, I, th I think uh, a lot of Brighton fans as well were, were stunned that the decision was given but it was they took full advantage and I think that was then the few little jabs there that Luton Town then took and just he couldn't sort of you know, get back on their feet from it. It's funny, as you, as you said, because of the Adingra goal for, uh, for Brighton, the third goal, we never really did go back to talk in detail about that challenge, as that was a little bit uh, late on Matoma. Referees giving the advantage once again. Um, Nakamba, when he caught João Pedro, it looked a, 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 it looked a certain point. We yeah. had a great view of it from here, though, didn't we? And, Definitely more so than the penalty that was given. He was waiting for it to be called back from a VAR, but followed up quickly by the goal. But so many positive today from Luton Town and Rob Edwards. They've you know, their first game here. They've got a goal down. You know, two goals down. They've not sort of thrown the towel in. They've not capitulated. They've kept going to the very end. You know, committing bodies forward, trying to get on the score sheet. They've got their goal they they deserved. Estepinian released down the left-hand side. Estepinian enters the penalty area. Estepinian rolls it in and sliding in at the far post is Evan Ferguson. So impressive last season with 10 goals. And he's up and running.
for this campaign as well. Brighton Hove Albion 4, Luton Town 1. And that scoreline doesn't necessarily reflect the endeavour of the Premier League debutants. Well, that's the best goal of the afternoon for sure. Lewis Dunk possessing that quality down this left hand side. A defence splitting pass, weight of pass straight into the avenue for the stupid end to race onto a fantastic ball, a trademark ball of his. And all the stupid has got to do is just put the ball across a six yard box. And there's two players there, in fact, isn't there, waiting. Adingra's there in case Ferguson misses it, but a typical striker that he's smiling before he's even put the ball in the back of the net. We're going to go straight to St Andrews. There's been a goal. John Bennett. Listen to this noise. It's Birmingham City 1, Leeds United 0. A penalty from Lukas Jukovic after Ethan Laird had been brought down. A late winner, but for Birmingham City, they lead by one goal to nil. Rangers 4, Livingston 0 is the latest score at Ibrox in the Challenge Cup. It's Hull KR 16, Lee 16. Commentary continues on Sports Extra. This is 5 Live and the World Service and on BBC Sounds and it's 4-1 for Brighton and Hove Albion. Back to Ibrox and Connie. Rangers 4, Livingston nil. Uh, what a way to introduce yourself for Kieran Dowell. Edge of the box, right-footed shot from about oh, 20 yards out. I think I'm not, not, I think I'm being kind just slightly though. Into the back of the net, absolute cracker. Rangers 4, Livingston nil. No other goals to tell you about elsewhere. But uh, Brighton 4, Luton Town 1. You would uh, imagine that there is still encouragement, positives for... Rob Edwards to take from this game? For sure. You know, you, if you're looking at dissecting the goals, yes, there was a penalty, a soft penalty was one, and the other was, was gifted. Yeah, mistake by the, the third Rudder. goal. Other than that, you know, Brighton have had to earn the, uh, the other two goals and, and earn this win today. And there indeed is the final whistle, and Luton Town back in the top flight after an absence of 31 years for a time. It looked like they were going to lose 3 1 until Ferguson's goal in the 95th minute. And it indeed finished Brighton 4, Luton Town 1. Steve Sidwell. Well, the scoreline 4 1. I think the Brighton fans were expecting a high scoring game, not expecting how diligent and disciplined Luton Town were. Great defensively. They do that throughout the course of this season. They will be picking up points. Their home form has to be the one that saves them this season if they are to regain the Premier League status. But Brighton are off and running. Well, last season, only Manchester City, Arsenal and Liverpool scored more goals at home in the Premier League. And Brighton and Hove Albion have hit four on the opening day. And for the first time since 1977, they've won on the opening day in three successive seasons. Brighton four, Luton Town one.